we don't come together, it's over. And I guarantee a week won't go by in your life. You won't regret walking out, letting them get the best of you. I'll ask you one last time. To be the best that you can be. Play like champions. Win. It's about heart. It's about who can go out there and play the hardest. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. I don't care what the scoreboard says. At the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. In any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die, willing to take the hits, who's going to win that itch. Let me tell you something you don't let in. Nothing. On this team, we fight, and we shut them down, because we can't. And welcome on in to Sox Harrison Stadium. It's time for Edinburgh Fighting Scots football right here on WFSE 88.9 Fighting Scots Radio and streaming live through Edinburgh now through YouTube. I am your host today, G. Tubby Schmidt. Alongside me today, my color analyst will be Gabriel G. Money Hypes. Gabe. Are you excited for today or what? I am very excited, and I love that you brought the nicknames over from the morning after into the call for the game. It made me even more excited. I didn't think you were going to do it, but Tubby, I'm ready. There was some chirping before the game between these two teams. I can tell they're going to have a lot of heart and attitude coming right out of the gate. Uh, a lot to prove for both teams. Edinburgh coming off a 9-2 and season, but Coach Lustig is gone. Yep, Coach Lustig is gone, and we have a semi, I like to say semi-new coach because he's been here forever. That's Coach Bradford taking over. He's been with the program since 99, 18 years of experience right here in Edinburgh, family roots. Um, So he's seen it all, been chomping at the bit, waiting for his chance. And now it's his chance to kind of drive the wagon train, if you will, as he takes the reins in his hands as the Wayne Bradford era begins right here in Sox Harrison Stadium today against the Lake Erie College Storm, making a short, I'd say roughly it's an hour and 45 minutes over from Painesville, Ohio, right uh, outside of the Mecca that is Cleveland. So there's a lot of local Cleveland kids as I look down on their roster, a lot of kids out of Manor, Lakewood, uh, Strongsville, North Olmstead, and uh, my personal favorite, close to my heart, Macedonia, which is where I used to live which is also where our buddy, our friend of the program, Vic Hudson, last year's All-American standout defensive end. Uh, That's also his hometown. And his brother, Vincent, who's on this year's squad. So uh, a lot of those names sounded made up to me. I don't don't know Ohio quite as well as you, but I do know Coach Bradford. You mentioned he's the semi-new coach. He's been here since, I believe, 1999. It's his first chance Mm -hmm. being head coach. He served under a few... So I don't feel like much will change. I, I, I know it's always a new coach, new system, but I feel like we talked about it two days ago where it was a group effort last year. Everything that they did last year seemed like uh, taking a little bit of each coach and putting them, them together, and that was the product that we saw out on the field. So I think losing Lustig, bringing in Bradford, is the perfect kind of next man up kind of thing. You You graduate – seniors like Vic, Vic Hudson, we talk about next man up. It's the same exact thing for the coaching staff. But plenty of returners, including quarter quarterback, senior Jake Sisson. He's going to be one of the keys to the game today. We're going to need to see the sharpshooter, the sniper Sisson, more than we are going to need to see the gunslinger Sisson, where he starts to get a little bit panicked and gets a little crazy with the ball. So if they take care of the ball on offense, 
uh, hits his targets. He has veteran receivers coming back. Uh, freshman now, sophomore standout to Naj Gregory will be back, who is just an absolute speedster, and speed kills. Speed does kill. Also returning will be James Clark, um, Darren Massey, and Blake Reddick. Uh, ride receivers coming out. Um, but on, on also he'll have uh, a running back, Walter Fletcher, will make his return. A little change in the program. Last year he wore number 31. This year he's wearing number five, so keep an eye out for him. Um, and then on the defensive side of the ball, you have, of course, Big John Gervin will be anchoring the side at end. Uh, and then you have um, a bunch of guys at uh, no, returning uh, nose guard and tackles. So, uh, you know, again, you know, a lot of returners coming back. We didn't lose too much to uh, senior uh, – graduations um but uh, i think special teams too they need to take care on special teams as we no longer have uh, austin automatic reese mm -hmm. we have a new kid in at kicker and i say new kid but he's really not um but we have a new kicker taking over uh for us i believe it's hunter daniels i believe is the is the kicker either that or, or mike kushma so it's still the first game still the first game and we'll We'll figure that out as time goes along, and we'll be bringing you all of that information as it happens. Yeah. And right we got a, a chance to talk to a couple of coaches before the game. Uh, it wasn't like talking to Coach Bradford last year. We actually have some insight on what we should expect uh, coming in on the defensive side especially. We got the word that Lake Erie likes to play two quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, one of which was the same as last year. The other, we have no tape on. Right, because he's, he's a brand-new guy, so we don't have any film on him. But it'll end up being much like the, uh, the Westchester game, and uh, they'll have uh, where they'll bring in multiple looks and probably do multiple functions, almost like a wildcat type of function, I would imagine. Um, also, they have that um, on offense, the, the left tackle is uh, all-conference, and uh, – Coach Neely stated before the game that they're really going to try to put him to the test and really see if he really is truly all-conference. And back to the multiple position players, they have two really good backs. Uh, number four, Desmond Turner, uh, and also number 21, Antoine Harris. Uh, they, they, they've seen the tape on them. They know what to expect. They know what to do if one of them is out in the field. If both of them are on the field at the same time, it's going to be more of a problem but it's something they can adapt to very quickly. Right. The uh, biggest key for me, I think, is, again, on both sides of the ball, Gabe, they're going to have to establish dominance on the line. They're going to have to get pushback from the defense on the defensive side. And on the offense, they're going to have to, like, lay into their guy, win that line. And once you win that small – if they win the small battles, they win enough of the small battles, then the big battles will just fall into place. And I think the first team to set the tempo of this game, we saw during the warm-ups, and actually both teams look like they might be coming out at the same time. No, I think that's just the captains for Edinburgh. But the whole Lake Erie squad is coming out. They kind of wrapped around where Edinburgh was warming up kind of as an intimidation thing. So Lake Erie is coming out, and they're coming out kind of feisty, it seems like. And so I think the first hit, the first kickoff, is what's going to set, set the true tempo to this game. And we'll see. It's either going to go right. They had. I, I don't want to say lack of respect, but they just didn't care. Yeah. You it, know. I, I mean, they, they they didn't care that they were in our house. They were just going to do their thing. I will say it's dis it was disrespectful. I, I really. I think it was disrespectful. But it's football. It's football. You I don't need to be you friends. Got, you got to say yeah. There's no. There's no hugging and hand holding. Yeah. But Edinburgh needs to take that disrespect and use it during the game. All right. The captains for Lake Erie College will be. Number eight, Dylan Starks, defensive back, senior. Number five, Zach Jude, linebacker, senior. Number 31, Mitchell Tilly, a y or, um, I guess a wide receiver. And number 11, James Moore, quarterback, senior. Uh, he's their projected starter uh, for this game. He'll be probably be the first one. Yeah, you mentioned number five. Zach Jude, linebacker. He is also their long snapper. He was out there warming up, and it's kind of a a 
not a usual long snapper, kind of a built middle linebacker going to be snapping the ball for them. Yeah, not not the normal look that you normally see. Um, as the rest of the Lake Erie College now comes out to fill their sideline. Um, not really a huge team, uh, numbers-wise. Um, Size-wise, they look about average, wearing green and white. So it's kind of it kind of gets my blood boiling a little bit because it kind of appears to be like the same colors as that school down south. So it gets me going a little bit. I'm a little excited to see Edinburgh come out. Now, Edinburgh does have new-look uniforms this year. They did change up the jerseys and the pants. They're wearing uh, all-white pants, and uh, the jerseys are a stark red with white and black patches on the shoulders, kind of almost like epaulets, if you will. Believe it or not, I know what that word is. And I'm that's proud a big of you, Tubby. Me. I know. I'm kind of proud of me, too. But, Tubby, the start of the game, who throughout – on the offensive side, has to come up big to Edinburgh to control the game and control the lead the entire time. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to say Sisson. It's all on the quarterback's hands. Um, he is out there for one of the captains, along with uh, number 44 Ryan Stanton, the big tight end. Um, also number 21, captain today, Zero Hendrick, cornerback. Look for him to have a big game today too. And the other captain is number eight, Devon Groves, a free safety. I'm also going to say Tanaz. I mean, we've seen with Sisson in the past, he can get careless with the ball sometimes. He really worked on that last year. But Tanaz can also make a, any quarterback look a lot better. So if Tanaz comes out and continues on the freshman of the year season he had last year, I think that quarterback and wide receiver duo can go a long way. We have now Edinburgh's lining up now in their home end zone with the borough flag carried by John Gervin and the American flag now carried by, I believe that's uh, Ethan Eperco, the other defensive end. So both ends carrying flags at this point, getting ready to go to run through the gauntlet that is uh, set up here by the Edinburgh Marching Fighting Scots. It is a chilly day out today. It's it's a football day. It is a football day. Today. It's like an October football day. Right. It's it's a little bit gray, a little bit hazy. There's a cool, crisp wind in the air. I was not looking forward to the the cold yet. Last year it was still really hot at this time. Yeah, we were roasting up here last year, opening up the windows and praying for a breeze. And now we got the breeze. But uh, it's just not gonna. I, it, it just works. I mean, for me, the whole thing, football, it just needs to have that chill in the air. And here they come, taking the field. Big squad this year. Big squad. I like the new uniform, uniforms. I, it's a fresh look. I like it. It's going to work out well for them. Now we're just waiting for... Uh, and to finish up the pregame here and get this all lined up and get ready to go here. Let's go ahead and step away now for a quick uh, one-minute break here on 88.9 WFSE. This is coverage on the Edinburgh Sports Network. The Edinburgh Sports Network is your source for live coverage of Fighting Scots Athletics. Enjoy all of the action on 88.9 WFSE and edinburghnow.com, with many home games also featured on ETV. Support for this game broadcast is provided in part by Bonnell's Auto Group, featuring collision services in Erie and Fairview, auto glass replacement and repair in Fairview, auto sales in Erie and Fairview, and full rod shop services and restoration in Fairview. Information on each service is on the web at bonnellsauto.com. Celebrating artists that make their music one effect pedal at a time, this is Subverse, and we're keeping Wednesdays weird. Only on WFSE 88.9, Fighting Scots Radio. Wednesday nights, 7 to 9, a mix of indie underground hits and new gaze for the inner hipster within us all. You can also listen online at edinburghnow.com or on the Nobex radio app. All right, welcome back to Sox Harrison Stadium. I am G. Tubby Schmidt. Alongside me is my color 
uh, analyst Gabe G Money Hypes, and we're about ready to kick off as uh, Lake Erie College has elected to receive. Edinburgh will be kicking off and will be moving left to right on your radio dial. That's number 94, Mike Kushma, doing the honors as kicker. Kicking off from the 35-yard line. Jumping on the sidelines already. I love it, Dobby. I really do. Good, solid kick into the end zone and out for a touchback. So no return from Lake Erie College. This is the first look as a Lake Erie College. The Storm will be taking on, coming out here on offense. Edinburgh setting up their defense coming out with their starters. I was not expecting the cannon. On kickoff? No, I was not. Nope, Nick Nick Predigu is in at nose guard. Upperco on right end and Gervin in at left end. Also joined up front by... By Derek Dorr, that's the other one. Crowd filled up real quick. It's getting pretty packed here. Yep, still still a little bit of seating left, so if you're making your way down the Sox, Harrison. Here, quick. There's a snap, handoff to number four, takes it around the end, has some room here, and trips up at the 35, slides into about the 37-yard line. Not how you want to start off the season. Kind of a, look like a 12-yard rush. For the standout running back, I believe that was number four, actually, uh, for Lake Erie, Desmond Turner. Turner. Snap to Moore. Moore hands off to number 21. 21 out around the side, down to the 40-yard line, and out of bounds for a gain of about four. So they're switching off those running backs maybe Every play now, it's going, now that was number 21, Antoine Harris. And it looks like that outside left outside linebacker is getting sucked in, so they ran a very similar play back-to-back back and got a decent gain on that one also. Now, Edinburgh has a plenty of youth here starting at linebacker, going with this 4-2 setup here. Again, hand handoff again, but he stopped in the backfield by John Gervin, just getting in there and eating him up, getting the whole sideline fired up on that tackle. No gain on that one. I'm going to say a loss of two. John Gervin didn't get a good hit on him at first, but that 260 frame kind of just grabbed him and gobbled him right up and brought him right down. There's no way you're going to get away from Gervin. No. More now in a shotgun. Two receivers to his left, two to his right, one running back in the backfield. Checking the play at the line. Changing up. Move the running back to his left side now. There's the snap. Rolls out to his left. Throws. Caught by number 14 and out of bounds at the 50. That is Joshua Collins, a wide receiver out of Strongsville, Ohio, with the reception and first down. That pass was kind of thrown very softly and a real opportunity to get picked there, but just couldn't get there from the cornerback. And then a big hit from number eight for Edinburgh, Devon Groves, more putting now, on the hit stick at the end. More now in a shotgun, trips to his top. Trips to his right, running back. Hands off to 21. Hit at the line of scrimmage. But still managed with second effort to get a gain of about seven yards. Or four yards. Sorry. Nice split to ride receivers. He has two to the top, two to the bottom. Running back number 21. Antoine Harris to his left. Checking the signal from the sideline. In the shotgun. Snaps the ball, looks for a shovel pass. Receiver drops the ball. Could be a fumble here. That is definitely a fumble, and they're going to call it Edinburgh ball. It is Edinburgh ball at the 50. Coming up huge is big Nick Pettigrew, the nose guard, showing some hands for the big man. That's what you need. Lake Erie was looking like. They were trying. They were getting adjusted to the offense. They were getting adjusted to Edinburgh's defense. They were moving the ball a little bit. All of a sudden, a turnover that can disrupt you for the entire game now. But it's exactly what the defense needed to do. I mean, they they were giving up yards. They were starting to get chewed on a little bit, but came up huge with a big play. So now here's Jake Sisson and the Edinburgh Fighting Scots offense for a look here. He's got 
James Clark down here near side. Walter Fletcher to his right. Trips receivers to the top. Right at the, their own 49-yard line. Jake in the shotgun. Ball snap. Looking. Looking to throw. Throws over the middle. Caught by Tanaz. And he's down at the 40 or 35-yard line for a first down. Edinburgh hushes, rushes to the line again. Again, James Clark here near side. Trips. Receivers to the top. Walter Fletcher to Sisson's right. Snap. Looking left. Throws left. Caught. He's in at the 20-yard line. Brought down is Darren Massey, a wide receiver for Edinburgh. So Edinburgh striking fast, striking hard here with their up-tempo offense. And they now, at the, the now at the 20-yard line of Lake Erie College. Now two receivers down. Tanaz Gregory and Clark here near side. Two to the far side. Walter Fletcher on his left. Hike the ball. Throw out to Walter Fletcher. Walter Fletcher dodges one man. Gets away. Gets to the 20. And almost to the 15. Down about the 14-yard line. Edinburgh, three straight passes to start out their offense. All three great throws from Jake Sisson. That second one, kind of a five-yard stop. And then a lot of leg movement from the receiver. Jake Sisson now in the shotgun. Walter Fletcher to his right. Two receivers down, two receivers up. Looking right. Looking for Tanaz. Throws it up for the corner and just throws it away. That's a wise play mm -hmm. to avoid the sack as Lake Erie College was coming on that one. Big number 91 and that linebacker number 5 uh, were coming into the backfield. That's something we might not have seen two years ago from Jake Sisson who would have tried to force it into somewhere where he probably shouldn't have and thrown a pick. So Sisson's getting wiser and wiser as the years go on. Right, Knowing that he still had a couple of downs here. Now we have uh, one receiver up to the left, two down here. Hand off to Walter Fletcher. Walter Fletcher down to about the 10-yard line. Does he have enough for the first down? I don't think so. I think I he'll think still be about three yards short. I think he's a – yep, you may be right. And they're going to go for it. Snap the ball. Hand off to Walter Fletcher. Walter Fletcher through the line. Dives. I believe he has the first down. Yes. Refs confirm. First down on the – Call it the five-yard line. Now first and goal. I'm sorry, it's at the six-yard line. Or fall on the seven. Snap, looking right. Has Clark. And Clark's out of bounds at the four-yard four line. And that was Second and goal. That was a great catch from James Clark. Ball was a little high, and he was covered, but he managed to get two hands on it, bobble a little bit, and then control it before he went out of bounds. So uh, uh, probably about a three-yard gain, but any little bit counts. Edinburgh now going with their uh, big man set up as both tight ends are in, two receivers, Clark and Tanaz. Tanaz in motion, comes across. We've seen this before, but now it's Jake Sisson running the ball straight up the middle with a little bit of razzle-dazzle, gets down to the two-yard line. Third down and goal now from the two-yard line. Ten minutes left to go here in the first quarter at Sox Harrison Stadium. Now they change out the tight ends, bring in the more wide receivers. Clark down here near side us. Trips receivers to Sisson's left. Walter Fletcher lines up on his right in the shotgun. Jake Sisson ready to go here. Snaps the ball. Looking right. Throws right. And nobody's available. A lot of pressure on Sisson there. He got hit almost immediately and just had to throw it up and hope for the best. But That was a uh, uh, defensive back blitz as Dylan Starks from Lake Erie College just came busting in through the line. Need to walk, need to capitalize here and walk away with six. It's fourth and two. Fourth and goal. Fourth and say, goal. On the two. Jake snaps the ball, looks left, throws left. Walter Fletcher can't handle the pass. Drops it. And again, it, it appears this game is going to be lively. Mm -hmm. As there's, there's some chatting going on back and forth here between the players. If Fletcher could have just gotten his hands on the ball, it looked like it would have been a touchdown, but... Drops it, and it's going to be a turnover on downs and Lake Erie ball. But still now, Lake Erie's got to start now at their own two-yard line game, and you know that you know what that means. 
It means they're in pick sixville, my friend. Not just pick pick sixville, they're in safety land and look for a player like John Gervin coming off the end. Right. Getting Edinburgh on the board with two points. He could very easily take him down to safety town. Zero zero nine twenty four left in this first quarter. Edinburgh taking on Lake Erie. Now there's a change of quarterback. That's Jarvon Jarvarian Smith in at quarterback for Lake Erie College. And he has Desmond Turner uh, lined up to his left. They're now bringing in um, Tyler Hampton, another wide receiver. And I think they took too much time, so Lake Erie College is going to take a timeout. Mm -hmm. This is the quarterback that I believe Edinburgh has not seen yet. As we said during the pre-show, they have two quarterbacks that rotate in and out. We, we've seen one, not the other, but Edinburgh has a game plan for both. Just haven't seen him on tape yet, so we have not seen what he is capable of. And not only two quarterbacks, also two running backs that we've already seen plenty of on that first drive with the fumble. It's number four, Desmond Turner, coming in almost every, other, every play, it seems like, is number 21, Antoine Harris. And both so far have had a a decent running, both over a decent running game so far, both over I believe 15 yards. The stats are not up currently, but one of them did have that fumble that caused Edinburgh to get the ball. But Edinburgh could not score, and they're currently on defense, blocking Lake Erie on their own two-yard line and. Lake Erie will snap the ball, and it's going to be a pass throw way over the head, picked off by Edinburgh, and he has some blockers. It's number 21 for That's Edinburgh, Zero Hendrick. Zero Hendrick. Zero Hendrick, and wow, way overthrown, and Hendrick's just able to stretch his arms out and get the pick. So that is two turnovers so far, and Edinburgh pretty much back down to where they were just a second ago on Lake Erie's own five-yard line. And Edinburgh's back in business. They have four plays to try to get the ball four yards. And with 9.20, Edinburgh has the ball once again. So that is two turnover, turnovers to none in favor of Edinburgh. And that offense is running back onto the field now. Sisson coming back out. Yep, Getting set up here with uh, Walter Fletcher now to his left. He'll have two receivers down here or three, I'm sorry, three to his right, with Tanaz Clark and Darren Massey. Shotgun snap, looking right. Has the bandit coming, rolls out to his right, throws to the far corner, and just gets rid of it. As they were just pushing on through. The Fighting Scots, Fighting Scots live broadcast is supported in part by John's Wildwood Pizzeria, open daily at 105 Erie Street in Edinburgh. For eating, delivery, or takeout, John's menu includes pizza, hoagies, wings, salads, and more. Information is at 814-734-7355 or on the web at johnswildwoodpizza.com. Back in the action now, Jake Sisson in the shotgun. Two receivers to the top, three receivers down here near side. Barks the call, snaps the ball, looks left, and whistle blown. I'm looking to see what the call is. I think it's going to be on Edinburgh. Maybe a false start, and it is false start on Edinburgh. So that will back them up. First penalty of the game for either team. They'll reset again. Again, three receivers here near side to us to Jake Sisson's right. Two receivers to the left. Jake in the shotgun. Ball snap, looks left with defenders coming, hit as he's thrown. That should be a little bit of taunting there, but I think the ref's going to let it slide as Dylan Starks comes in for the sack for Lake. Well, it's not really a sack because he got rid of the ball. but The offensive line is not giving Sisson any time right now. He is getting hit almost immediately and having to just throw the ball away or make a, a poor throw. Jake now looking right, throws back across the body left to trying to get it over to Ryan Stanton, a big tight end, but I just threw it, just led him a little bit too far. Now the kicking team comes on. 
Sisson had a lot of time there, just a, a poor throw. But uh, Lake Erie is bringing the house pretty much every play, and they're doing pretty good on defense, and not a lot of, not a lot of guys have been open except for little dink passes on the outside. And they set up now for the field goal as Cushman on the kick. And it's good. Edinburgh strikes first blood. Three points for the Edinburgh Fighting Scots at 8.58 here in the first quarter over Lake Erie College, the storm. We'll go ahead and step away here for about 30 seconds and bring you right back in the action. This is the Edinburgh Sports Network. So you don't have to miss even a minute. It's the Fighting Scots in action on the Edinburgh Sports Network. On the radio at 88.9 WFSC and online at edinburghnow.com. Video of many home games is also featured on ETV. This game broadcast is underwritten in part by... The Edinburgh Hotel Bar at 100 Meadville Street in downtown Edinburgh, providing a variety of lunch and dinner items every day. Details are available at 814-734-5103 or online at edinburghhotelbar.com. The Edinburgh Hotel Bar, where you had me at hotel. Okay, and we're back right here on the Edinburgh Scots. Sports Network, Edinburgh scoring on a field goal with 8.58 left to go here in the first. Now Edinburgh will kick off to Lake Erie College. Edinburgh moving left to right on your radio dial. And here we go. The kick is up. Not as deep as the other one. In about the 10-yard line, the receiver bobbles. It has some trouble coming out of the backfield, making it up to about – the 24-yard line, call it 23? I'll call it, yeah, right around there, 24, 23-yard line, and some chirping right now, and refs trying to whistle away a little bit. A lot of chirping so far in this short game. We're only a few minutes into it, but both sides. You mentioned uh, earlier a taunting maybe should have been called on Lake Erie. No, no taunting called, but the ref did have a word with the linebacker, but... I don't know what the delay is right now, what they're whistling about, but I think we're back on action. Is that a block in the back? Because they backed them up. They did. A good 10 yards there. So now they're securely into pick sixville here as they start out on their very own, call it the 11-yard line. Ball in the 11. With now Jimmy Moore back in at quarterback for Lake Erie College. He has two receivers to his left, two to his right. Running back is left. There's some motion now. But the running back drops the ball. Edinburgh gets the sack. Is he in the end zone for the safety? I think they're going to call him down at the, like, inches. He fumbled the ball and while he was picking up, went backwards and got – Tackled by, I, I did not see who was on the tackle, but uh, a couple of fighting Scots, and that was very close to safety. I thought for a second it could have been. I think his knee touched in the end zone, but I think the ball was just hanging over just a little bit, so the ref put him down on the one-yard line, and so it's going to be two and two down. Uh, it's going to be two and 20 to go. And they are securely in safety town. As they line up, Jimmy Moore and a quarterback hands off to his running back. Running back breaks through the front line, gets to about the nine-yard line. Those running backs have so quick feet, they're going to be a little – something to worry about for the rest of this game. And they're getting a lot of breaks. They're still going in and out between the number 21 and number four. Yeah, they're pretty deep at that running back position. Again, two receivers each side for Jimmy Moore of Lake Erie College. Running back to his left. I think, is this going to be a little bit of trickery with the direction? No, they're not. Okay. It kind of looked like that play where the quarterback starts wandering off and then they direct snap it to the running back, but they didn't. He drops back now in his own end zone. Edinburgh bringing the house, but he steps up and is able to gain a single yard. So now it'll be fourth down and 13 to go. I believe Lake Erie College is going to bring on their punt team here. And they'll kick it away as Zerl Hendrick, the man with the interception earlier, 
is back to receive about at the 45 on uh, his own 45 yard line here. We saw Hendrick running wild just a moment ago on that interception was able to gain probably about 30ish yards all the way down to the 4. We'll see what he's able to do on the punt team, but no another another timeout from Lake Erie. That's their second one. Well, it's not like you can take them with you into the second half, Gabe. You might as well use them while you can. Yeah, but you never know what it's going to be like at the end of the first half. You might need your timeout. Yeah, certainly true. I mean, it's give one, take one, either way. We're bringing you all the action live on the Edinburgh Sports Network thanks to sponsors like Bonnell's Auto Group, featuring collision services in Erie and Fairview, auto glass replacement and repair in Fairview, auto sales in Erie and Fairview, and full rod shop services and restoration in Fairview. Information on each service is on the web at bonnellsauto.com. Okay, Lake Erie seems to have everything all sorted out now. Hendrick is now at his at the 50, ready to receive. Snap, kick, is up, and is going to almost... Make it, and he catches it. Makes it to about the 40. So Edinburgh will start about. It'll start on the Lake Erie College side at the 42-yard line. What a risky, uh, no, no oh, sorry, fair 37. catch. He got hit almost immediately and was able to squeak through and knock it hit hard. I really expect him to call for the fair catch there. Yeah, I, I thought he was going to do that as well, but he just. Decided to try to gut it out, so now here comes a Jake Sisson and the offense. Three receivers near side here to us. One receiver to his left, Walter Fletcher, on his left hip as Jake is in the shotgun. Changing the coverage at the line. Ball snap, looking right, looking right, throws right, tipped at the line, almost intercepted by Lake Erie College. I believe that was number seven from Lake Jason Rogers. Defensive lineman, 6'5", 245, got his mitts up there to block that pass. And it was number eight, Dylan Starks, who had the ball in his hands for the pick, but it just bobbled right out. Number nine, excuse oh, me. Oh, wild snap now. As Walter Fletcher falls on it now, Edinburgh backed all the way up to their very own 45-yard line. This offensive line is going to need a talking to at some point in this game. It's either not giving Jake Sisson enough time and now way over the head of Jake Sisson on that, on that snap. Yeah, Coach Corey's going to be in there eating some lunches, I can guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. They line up again, trips receivers here, two Sisson's right, Walter Fletcher on his right hip, one receiver up top on his left. Ball snapped again, and now delayed handoff to Fletcher. Fletcher breaks free, gets down to about the Lake Erie College 41-yard line. You go for it, Tubby? Fourth on and long. Fourth and super long. But, I mean, you're not really in the, the punt range. And you're not no, in field goal range. You're not range. in punch range. You're not in kick I range. Think, actually, I think you probably punt us away on fourth and this long. Unless it's a quarterback punt. Yep. Yep. Good call, That's Tubby. exactly what it's going to be. And Jake punts it down there. It's going to get into the ten Nope, into the end zone and out for a touchback. Good call, Tubby. I did not see that coming. He did it. He did it some last year, but it's not a play that um, is very common, at least. No, I mean he has it in his bag of tricks, but it's not something that this team. Well, last year they didn't really have to use it a whole lot because they were scoring. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom, boom. You know they would go, you know the span of the field, 80, 70 yards sometimes in less than a game minute. So, you know it's not something that they had to rely on. But it's nice to know that he has it in his pocket as the defense comes out now. Lake Erie talking stuff over, trying to get their offense set. Okay, Jimmy Moore is not in at quarterback. Hopefully we have a repeat of the last time. I believe that's Javarian Smith in at quarterback. He's got three receivers to his left, his running back on his left hip, and one receiver far up top. And the shotgun. Ball snap, looks to hand off. To number 21, breaks around the outside, gets to the 30. 
call it the 28-yard line. And it's going to be a late hit on Edinburgh. It, it was well out of bounds when he got hit, so I agree with that call. 5-10 left in the first quarter. Edinburgh leads 3 to nothing. You're listening to, you're listening to live coverage of the Fighting Scots action on the Edinburgh Sports Network, sponsored in part by... The Edinburgh Hotel Bar, serving a variety of lunch and dinner items every day from their location at 100 Meadville Street in downtown Edinburgh. Information is at 814-734-5103 or online at edinburghhotelbar.com. So it was a personal foul. And so Lake Erie will move up. Smith now in the shotgun. Running back on his left hip. They bring the blitz. Comes in, almost has him. Pass, thrown, and caught. That's the number 31, Mitchell Tilly. And he's brought down short of the first down marker. In fact, he only gained about two yards on that play. Lake Erie now getting set up. Has one receiver here near side, two receivers far side to the quarterback's right. They bring the one in motion. Ball snap looks for a quick. This is going to be a bubble screen. Makes it to about the 50-yard line where he's greeted by a host of red jerseys. Looks like a gain of four. Both teams being very conservative, either running the ball or just throwing the ball no more than five yards. Each time, I think Edinburgh had the longest actual throw, and I think it was about 10 yards. So both teams taking what the defense is giving them. Again, Lake Gary, real quick to the line. They have three receivers down here near side. One receiver far side with the running back on the quarterback's left. Snap the ball. Hand off. Nope. Quarterback keeps it. Breaks through the middle. Gets to about the 40-yard line where it's finally brought down by Aaron Rodgers. Edinburgh's got to watch that option. I mean, they bit too hard on the outside, so the quarterback that was Javarian Smith just kept it himself, ran right up the middle, a huge hole, and so a gain of about 12 yards. Again now, same setup. Looking left, shovel pass over to number 21, but he's caught up. By number eight, that's Devon Groves, the free safety, read it the whole way. Now we're getting a little bit too chirpy for everybody's liking as some players had to be separated. But you don't really see that. The quarterback needed to be separated with a defensive lineman. It was number three, Javarian Smith, being separated by number 56, Brennan Green, the big defensive lineman. So you don't really see that very often. Yeah, I, I really don't think I want I mean, because – I wouldn't want to miss with Brennan Smith. No, I, I mean, dude looks like he could eat me for breakfast. <laughs> I mean, he's – all of like 260, 270. Ball snap now, fake handoff. Rolls right now, shovel pass over to that side. But there is a host of Edinburgh defenders there to greet him. No game. And a great tackle, I believe, that was Zareel Hendrick flying in and putting on, putting on the big hit. And that is no gain. Ball on the 41-yard line, third and 13 with two minutes and 30 seconds to go in this first quarter. Again, now three receivers now near side. One receiver up to the north with the running back here in his left hip. Shotgun formation. There's ball snap. Looking downfield. Takes a shot. Throws left. But, oh, my goodness. In and out of the hands of Brandon Anderson, the strong safety. Also, Zero Hendrick was there on the backside coverage. So they had the play red. The court, the safeties were there where they needed to be. They just couldn't come down with the ball. And a couple of Lake Erie wide receivers very upset. They thought they were open. I didn't see much opening. And uh, I think the corners went to the ball also. Maybe it was a wrong route by number 81. He's getting a lecture on the sideline. But either way, it's fourth and long. They're going to punt. And the punt is up and away. 
Zero Hendrick kind of fakes like he was going to get it, but it takes a Lake Erie roll here and gets all the way down to the Edinburgh one-yard line. They're going to call it dead. The home crowd needs to get into this game also. It's, it's not a good thing when the opponent is making more no the opponent cra crowd is making more noise than the home crowd it's we have it's pretty much packed now i see a few open seats but you need to start getting on their feet and screaming but first edinburgh offense needs to actually have a decent drive yeah they need to get out of safety town here jake has one receiver to his right two to his left walter fletcher in at his left hip Shotgun formation, looks in, checks the play. Got one in his light, calling out the changes. Ball snap, hand off to Walter Fletcher. Walter Fletcher pushing, shoving his way through up to the five-yard line. Now Edinburgh has a little bit of breathing room where Jake can go to work. Second and five on Edinburgh's own six-yard line. Shotgun snap, hand off to Walter Fletcher. Walter Fletcher up through the hole, makes it up to the 10-yard fumble. Ball's out. I don't know who recovered it at this point. They said Edinburgh, Edinburgh ball. It was close, though. It was real close. As number 72, Vitaly Gurman, the center, comes up with the ball. Seems like they're having some type of equipment issue here with one of the Lake Erie College linemen trying to get his helmet all snapped back up, ready to go. Jake now looking in for the play. Has one receiver up to his left. Two receivers here near side to us with Walter Fletcher again in his right hip. Now they're going to bring the receiver down. So now have three receivers to his right along with the running back. Shotgun snap, go. Hand off to Walter Fletcher. Walter Fletcher delayed run, trying to make his way up through the front line. Gets close, but not enough to a first down. No, it's going to be second down. Second? Okay. Yeah. And that's the thing with Fletcher. Fletcher probably got hit on a two-yard gain, but he's able to keep his feet moving. That's the second time in a row, and turn a little into a lot in a seven-yard gain. Yep, the handoff again. He avoids one tackler, breaks through another one, and now punches it through for a first down. 37 seconds left in the first quarter. Clock is running. Edinburgh and, on their own 21-yard line. Yep, still driving the ball here, just taking nibbles and nibbles and nibbles. Hand off fake. Jake throws deep, looking for intercepted. That's Dylan Starks on the interception, trying to bring it back. Still on his feet. Finally gets out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Not a good throw. Uh, he was the attempted pass was to uh, who was it to? I, I miss that. But the attempted pass was covered, and there was a safety over the top. Safety stepped up and just jumped up at the highest point and was able to catch the ball and got a decent return on it also. Jake Sisson's going to get an earful on that one. That is a pass that he should not be making. Yeah, it, it, it kind of rainbowed a little bit, but I... I've seen, I've seen that. I mean, I've seen it gone either, either way, too. I've also seen our receivers come up with that ball, so... Something that's not good, and we did not see it all last season. Lake Erie bench is in the game way more than the Edinburgh bench. They're jumping around. They're screaming. They're making themselves known. I haven't heard much from Edinburgh sidelines yet. Snap the ball. Moore decides to keep it himself, tries to advance. It gets about two, maybe three yards on that one. That's going to do it for the first quarter. Your score at the end of the first. Edinburgh Fighting Scots 3, Lake Erie College Storm 0. 
You're listening to live coverage of the Fighting Scots action on the Edinburgh Sports Network. Sponsored in part by John's Wildwood Pizza, open daily at 105 Erie Street in Edinburgh. For eat-in, delivery, or takeout, John's menu includes pizza, hoagies, wings, salads, and more. Information is at 814-734-7355 or on the web at johnswildwoodpizza.com. We're going to go ahead and step away here for a minute break, and we'll be right back right here on the Edinburgh Fighting Scotch Sports Network. So you don't have to miss even a minute. It's the Fighting Scots in action on the Edinburgh Sports Network. On the radio at 88.9 WFSC and online at edinburghnow.com. Video of many home games is also featured on ETV. This game broadcast is underwritten in part by... John's Wildwood Pizzeria, open every day at 105 Erie Street in downtown Edinburgh. For eat-in, delivery, or take-out, John's menu includes pizza, hoagies, calzones, wings, salads, and more. Information is at 814-734-7355 or on the web at johnswildwoodpizza.com. Don't you wish you could find all of the latest news in one spot? Well, now you can. My name is Carly Dyes, and I bring you the news at 8. A show designed to bring you all the news you need to know in one spot. Join me Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on your morning commute or grab a cup of coffee with me as we talk international, national, music, celebrity, campus, and community news. The News at 8, right here on 88.9 WFSC, Fighting Scots Radio, or online at edinburghnow.com. All right, welcome back to Sox Harrison Stadium. As your score is 3-0 to zero right now with Lake Erie College threatening to get some points on eyes of their own. Uh, previous play uh, was a reception from Jimmy Moore to, I believe, his running back number four, Desmond Turner, for a gain of about five yards. It's now first and goal here from the 10-yard line. And... Turner runs the ball up, getting to about the two or three yard line now. Moore back in the shotgun, has two receivers to his right, has his running back Turner to his right, and one receiver up far to his left. Shotgun snap, hands the ball, there's a fumble. Does Edinburgh recover? Moore tries to fall on it. Edinburgh might have got another break right here. I think Edinburgh jumped on it first. So there's going to be fighting in the bottom of the pile, but Edinburgh seems to think they got it. Still waiting for the official word from the referees. Yeah, Edinburgh sideline screaming, but they're going to call it Edinburgh ball. And Edinburgh just got a lucky, lucky break for the third time. Edinburgh, I, I mean, it's I can't I, I can't tell you if Edinburgh's that good, or if they're that lucky, or if Lake Erie College just can't get well, out of their own way. Well, both both fumbles for Lake Erie were no, non-collision fumbles. The interception was a, a good play by Edinburgh, but the the fumbles were all on Lake Erie, and right there they. They were kind of starting to manhandle Edinburgh a little bit. So Edinburgh gets out of a scare there on another turnover. They need to do something here. They really need to do something. Edinburgh takes over at their own six-yard line here. Ball snap. Hand off to Walter Fletcher. Walter Fletcher up through the middle. Makes it to about the 13, 14-yard line. To bring up a, a second down and six to go here with... 13.48 left to go in the half. Jake Sisson now has two receivers up top, two down here bottom. Looks right, throws right, and just lawn darts it right into the dirt. I think that might have been tipped. I don't, hopefully it would have been tipped because it was a really poor pass, but they got knocked down to the line. Yeah, it was set up to be one of those bang-bang plays, and it just didn't. Just didn't go off like bang, bang. A little bit hesitant. Same so Nope, different setup now. Three receivers up to the right. One down here left. Looking left. Throws left. That is tipped at the line. And was intended for Kyle Gaelic running back. But with the tip at the line, 
uh, and just ended up being under them. It is now going to be fourth and four from their own 10-yard lines, and Edinburgh is going for it? Okay. See how I, this works out for him. One receiver down here, two Jake's left, two up to the right. Nope, he's going to step up away and punt it. They fooled me again. I was very confused. Takes an Edinburgh hop and roll now down to the Lake Erie College 42-yard line. Yeah, and another three and out for Edinburgh, punting it away from Jake Sisson. And, I mean, those passes are on – I mean, it's on the offensive line. Jake Sisson is getting sworn, but it's also on Sisson, too. He has to get, his, he has to get the ball up. I, it's not a very big defensive line, so it's not like he has to get it over some huge guys at, like, at, on, on yeah. the front line. But So Sisson's got to get those balls up, and the line's got to block a little bit better. Right now, Edinburgh offense that was so electric last year can't do anything. And if we had the live stats for, for you, we would tell you the stats so far, but we do not. Hopefully we'll, we will get those to you at halftime. Yeah, I'm trying to. All right, they changed again at uh, quarterback as Javarian Smith will take over. Snap, hands off, round the outside, cross the 50, greeted at the 45-yard line. That's, That's running back Antoine Harris. That option with uh, Javarian Smith, and they need to start expecting it. That's all they've been doing to throw, and if they do throw it, it's very little dinky passes, but that option, they got hooked in very, very badly. It was two Edinburgh tacklers tackling the quarterback, and he didn't even have the ball. Yeah. Now they set up again. They have three receivers to the right. And option again, but this time the quarterback keeps it, kind of loses his feet a little bit, and only gains about two yards. I mean, that that was not only an option there. That was a triple option. He had a an option on the outside for a little pitch, but he decided to take it himself for a one-yard gain, maybe. So, penalty here. I wasn't able to catch what it was, but... I think they are saying about uh, because his helmet came off, he had to stay out okay. for one play. Yeah, because neither team moved upper back, so I think you're right, Tubby. Now they're in this double stack Jets formation where the two receivers are stacked up one behind another. Fake handoff to the receiver, but well read by number 24. That's Mar Maurice Sims, cornerback, veteran cornerback for Edinburgh. Had that read the whole way for that screen and was right on it. He couldn't have read it any better, but if he did, that ball would have been picked off and returned for six points. And that might be what Edinburgh needs right now to get this offense jump-started, their defense scoring some points. Again lined up now, has uh, two receivers regular style, two to the north, two to the south here, with his running back, Antoine Harris, to his right. Or no, nope, switched him up now, moved him to his left. As I was saying, he was on his right. Moved him over to the left. There's a full-on rush here. He has some running room. Breaks three. He's now at the 30. Down and runs out of bounds smartly here at the 20, call it the 23-yard line. A very athletic play from Javarian Smith. Uh, had that was had a, a blocker down the field that's just getting sucked in. You're, you had a, a QB watchman, but he was able to get blocked at the last second for Lake Erie, and so a huge gain on a third and long for Lake Erie. Now they're back in business on Edinburgh's 24-yard line. Now with two running backs, one to either side, one receiver down, and two receivers up top, and whistle blown. It's going to be a timeout on Edinburgh. Edinburgh's going to want to talk this over, but that previous play before, that wasn't a designed quarterback run. That was kind of a busted coverage play. Mm -hmm. um, all of his, all of the Lake Erie College receivers were well covered and had, uh, he had basically nowhere else to go. The pocket was collapsing, and he just kind of squirted it out of it. And what Lake Erie is doing, they're going up to the line, showing you a formation, and then they're seeing what Edinburgh is lining up. 
and then they're getting the play call in. And so that's why they've had to use two timeouts now is because they've taken too long. But that strategy is working. So Edinburgh is getting up to the line ready at the, the high end of the play clock and letting Lake Erie decide what they want to do. Edinburgh's need to start moving around on the defense faking blitzes, faking where you're going to be going, and then resetting when they finally set. I mean, they go up the line, act like they're going to snap it, and you have Javarian Smith, their quarterback, looking over to the the sidelines, getting the read, getting the play call. Then they move around. You saw last time you were, like, the running back on the right side. Nope, he's on the left side now. So they're waiting for Edinburgh to make a move when it should be Edinburgh waiting for Lake Erie to make their moves. But it is 11 minutes to go in this first half. Edinburgh still leads three to nothing, but Lake Erie is knocking on the door. Yep, so there'll definitely be some halftime adjustments made here. See if they can clean it up. And now they come out again. Same set. One receiver near side, two receivers far side, two running backs. Quarterback in the shotgun, fix the handoff, looking to throw. Throws deep across the middle, but coverage is there. Intercepted by Edinburgh. That's number nine, Brandon Anderson, the strong safety. Coming up with the ball, just playing center field, snatching that one out of the air. An athletic play from Edinburgh, and that is the fourth turnover turnover by Lake Erie. If, if I was, uh, let's say, a running back for Lake Erie, I would probably go on the sidelines, grab my offensive coordinator or head coach, and be like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Every single time they've thrown deep now, it's been almost picked off or picked off. Lake Erie has been controlling the run game or the short little pass game but they don't seem to want to do that. And so Lake Erie, I mean, Edinburgh will take advantage of that any day of the week, and so they get their fourth turnover. So Edinburgh defense doing the whole bend, don't break method. Right, it's looking. definitely turning. Sox Harrison is definitely turning into a no-fly zone. Mm-hmm. Jake Sisson now with his offense out on the field. He's got three receivers far side, Walter Fletcher in his right hip, and one receiver down the left side. He's going to bring the left receiver over. Throws deep, looking deep, has a man. And is it caught or no catch? They're going to say no catch. Wow. As he was looking for James Clark deep, but he had a corner with him. James Clark was, oh, no, James Clark was wide. He had a step on him, but the pass just underthrowed, and so James Clark had to come back and battle for the ball and almost picked off. Clark had a step or two. Yeah. I, I, I put my arms up because I thought that was off to the races if the ball was on target, but it just was underthrown by a little bit. Jake now hikes the ball, looking right, throws right. A little underthrown again, but caught? Or is he out of bounds? Out of bounds. That that ball did not have a spiral, and it was underthrown. Jake's got to get his head in, head in the game right here. He's got to put a little mustard on it. Something. You have all conference receivers. You have a great wide receiver core. Let them run wild. And yeah. those, those two passes there, if they were on target, they would have been complete. Right, because Clark and, and Gregory are making plays for you along with Massey. They're fighting for the ball. Snap now, looking deep. Throws again. Just a little bit too far in front for Blake Reddick. And a good thing he w- it was because he would have gotten crushed he over would the middle. He would have got Jake lit up. Kinda, yeah, because he, yeah. he had one corner on his, on his tail with the safety crossing looking with harmful intent. Now back at the line, he's got two receivers to the – to the far side, one near side, Walter, Walter Fletcher in at his left hip. And the shotgun steps back, looks like another punt. Boom, and it is. Ball's going to land right around the 45. Takes an Edinburgh bounce and roll. And will come to rest about the 34-yard line. Another three and out, zero yard gained on that drive. I mean, if you're... If you're Jake Sisson and you're the offense, you got to be thanking your lucky stars for the defense and keeping you in this game. I think you got to thank your defense, and you have to thank the Lake Erie uh, offensive coordinator or whoever's calling the plays on that side because they have given you those turnovers a couple of those times. This game has been controlled so far, I hate to say it, by Lake Erie, but this Edinburgh defense, like you said, isn't giving them much through the air no fly zone might be something where we have to tag it this year. We might have to as Lake Erie now comes to the ball. More in at quarterback. Three receivers till it fakes the handoff. Ties the run with his right pitches. But no, well read by Edinburgh. Stops him in the backfield. 
I, nice I, coverage. I have to admit, I am a real sucker for the triple option. I think it's the the most fun and the best offense in college football. But Edinburgh, looking like they're adjusting to it. It's really hard to get the hang of it, but Edinburgh now, they know because it was either the quarterback running back or – uh, slot receiver getting the ball there. They had all three covering. I think Edinburgh is going to be shutting it down now. Yep. They just got to stay home and man their assignments. Now looking three receivers to the far side, one near side, running back to the left. Hands it off to the running back. Makes it to about the 38-yard line and now wow. a flag. Are they going to call that a late hit? Wow, a late flag on a – I believe it's going to be a late hit. That is a horrible call. If it is, in fact, against Edinburgh, that will be a horrible call. This will be the field judge here making the call. Maybe they're saying the leading with the helmet. Let's listen. It could be a block in the back on Lake Erie, I believe. I couldn't really see his hands, but I know it's on Lake Erie. Oof, we might have had a... Yeah, they're going to decline the first one. Or they're going to... They're gonna... Decline the penalty. The microphone system isn't working here for the refs, really. It's kind of going in and out. But So are they marking it? Where are they? You know, they... I'm, I'm a little lost. I'm We're a trying little to lost, figure too, it out. but it looks like it's going to be on Edinburgh. It's going to be on both teams, but Edinburgh's penalty was worse. So they're going to move them up five yards. So it might have been a block in the back and then a late hit. Okay. I think is what they're calling it. Looking right, looking to throw right into the middle here, but he's well covered. I want to say that's number eight on the tackle. Devon Groves, the free safety, coming up and making a stop. No gain on the play. A short gain, maybe about two yards, so they're going to be about fourth and two on their own 42-yard line. It looks like they're going to keep the offense out there. This is this is a real chance for Edinburgh. You get them off the field, you give your offense some great starting field position that they haven't had in a while. Maybe that will jump start Walter Fletcher's running or Jake, Jake Sisson's arms. Three receivers near side here to us with the running back. Watch the screen. And nope, they try to run it straight up the gut, but Edinburgh makes the stop. That'll be Edinburgh's ball as they take over on downs. As again, the cream rises to the crop here for the for the Edinburgh defense. 8.35 left to go here in the half. Your score, Edinburgh Fighting Scots 3, Lake Erie College Storm 0. And I mean, that was a moment of the game so far. Somebody on that sideline for Edinburgh has to start screaming, has to start getting them up. That was a fourth and short. Now your offense has all the room to work with. That was a big moment. You should be excited and get your team in the in the right mindset to go down and finally get a touchdown. Jake, now two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Walter Fletcher in at his left hip. Shotgun, snap, looks, throws downfield and caught. That's a nice catch by James Clark, veteran wide receiver, for a first down Nice now throw. in business. Now if Edinburgh can establish their tempo here and get back on pace, they'll be okay. Nice two throw, receivers nice top, two receivers bottom. Snap, looks left, throws right, right into Clark, but he's hit as the ball arrives. Like I say, it was incomplete. Incomplete pass. Go ahead, Gabe. You were saying before that play started? I was saying not only was it a great catch from James Clark, he kind of dove, but, I mean, he didn't really have to. He was kind of going down, so he didn't have to get hit. But Jake Sisson also right on top, right on, on target, a nice 10-yard ten little, ten little pass. I'm trying to find my words right now. Three receivers to the left side. They decide to hand it off to Fletcher. Fletcher breaks free. He's in at the 10, down to the 5. Touchdown, Walter Fletcher. Touchdown, Edinburgh fighting Scots. 28-yard touchdown run. That is exactly what this Edinburgh offense needed. It was designed to go up the middle on a Walter Fletcher run, but, you know, we talk about with a running back like Le'Veon Bell, patience. I think Fletcher might have been watching him a little bit before hitting the hole. He kind of looked around, looked to his right. He saw nobody was over there. Got a great block on the outside from James Clark and Fletcher untouched all the way to the end zone. 28-yard gain, 9 nothing, and looking for the exclamation point. Whew, what a run, Tubby. That's 
I, I love to see it. I mean, he has that potential. He has that patience. He has that vision. Kind of sees where the hole's at. Now here's uh, Kushma for on for the extra point. Kick is up and good. That brings your score now to 10 for Edinburgh Fighting Scots. Lake Erie College Storm, a zero. 808 left in this, this first half of play. I can feel the momentum, the, the mood shifting. It was Lake Erie with all the momentum, and after turnover after turnover, Edinburgh is back in it, leading 10 nothing. The band is playing, the crowd is cheering, the sidelines are going crazy. I think once we start on this kickoff, and Edinburgh is going to be jumping up and down, I think Edinburgh is going to be ready to go. I think that's the confidence builder that this offensive side needed. They needed to score. Now they're now I think the floodgates will open up, mm -hmm. and they'll start scoring in bunches now that they have the confidence back. Um, again, if you're Lake Erie College. You know, good luck to you. Because when, when this train gets a firing on all cylinders, it's, whoo. You're absolutely right. That's something that we saw last year is that Edinburgh would stick around a little bit, but then all of a sudden they can score three touchdowns in just a matter of minutes back to back to back, and then all of a sudden you got a blowout coming. So I wouldn't be surprised if Edinburgh is able to get a quick stop on defense here and then another quick score before the halftime. That's what I'm hoping for, at least. That's yeah, what I'm and they're getting, for. they're getting all gathered here as the band starts to strike up the uh, the Jaws theme. Hold them back on the sidelines. And the kick is up. High, lofty kick in about the 12-yard line. Lake Erie receives it, trying to bring it back up. Nice stick. There by Walter Fletcher comes up and makes the stop. You don't see that every day. I mean, what scores the touchdown and then makes the stop on a kickoff? Maybe you put him in a middle linebacker too. What? Why that was a not? nice stick. That was nice. Brought the lumber with that one. Yeah, I we we both kind of we both know who number five is, but we both checked the sheet and we we're like, is there another number five, five? that we're yeah. missing? Am I missing it? Hmm. Still looked down at the sheet. I mean. There are some schools that, and I hate the schools that do that, that will like double up on numbers. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, really? You got that many guys on your team? You can't come up with another number? I agree. All right, Lake Erie College now showing with the two running back set, quarterback in the shotgun. And there's a little miscommunication fumble. Does Edinburgh have it? If they do, this could be huge, Gabe. I don't think they do. They're going to give it to Lake Erie. And that's the thing that with the triple Whoa. option, it, it causes a lot of confusion. If you're not. A, in your second year or third year of running the triple option, it's new to you. And so that was with the turnovers with uh, the two fumbles that they've had. And also you got to give credit to Edinburgh there. I mean, they were right in the face of the quarterback. He kind of panicked and tried to just throw it into run his running back's arms and made him drop it. So Yeah, Shavari and Smith now in at quarterback. Goes to hand it off to his running back. Cuts back in, makes it about, I want to say, five yards on that run to about the 29-yard line. Edinburgh going with their, I like to call it the big meat fact, uh, their big meat line <laughs> here with Fisher uh, in at nose tackle along with Door. Oh, quarterback hit hard as he throws, but caught. He's got some running room down the side, down to the 40, down to the 30, and finally pushed out of bounds. What turned into look like a very capable uh, tackle after catch turned it into a lot. That is number 81 for Lake Erie. David Wright turning on his jets and getting a lot of room. No, that was 31. 31, excuse me. Yeah, that'll be uh, Mitchell Tilly. I think it was 81, but you say 31. Yep. And they try to run the ball straight up the middle, but Edinburgh's having nothing of that. Stops him with only a gain of about a yard and a half. Still staying on the field is Javarian Smith, quarterback. 
here for Lake Erie College. And again, they go with this two running back setup. They have two receivers here near side, one far side. And the quarterback keeps it, runs it straight up the middle. And he's not stopped in time, but still makes a first down. And this Lake Erie offense, when they're not turning the ball over, has been looking pretty good. It, I think it's mostly Edinburgh has not seen uh, an option system like this a lot, and especially a triple option system. And they're probably not going to see it for the rest of the year. No, I don't, I don't think anybody else runs it. Paul Johnson does. With the Ramblin' Tech. Handoff again to number four. And breaks it over to the five. Makes it down to about the ten-yard line. I said Ramblin' Tech, but Ramblin' Wreck. But it, 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 the, 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 the triple option really only works uh, when you have athletic backs, and that is exactly what Lake Erie has with number four, especially Desmond Turner, who has gotten kind of a field day so far. But we've seen this bend-don't-break offense for Edinburgh. Oh. All kinds of flags everywhere. I don't know who jumped where. I think it was on the offense. And again, they get down here in the red zone, and Lake Erie College just shooting themselves in the foot. I mean, uh, they can't get out of their own way here. I'm not complaining, mind you. And uh, credit goes to Edinburgh also. You, you see them moving around a little bit and uh, on the defense a little bit more, causing a little bit more disruption, faking blitz. Maybe they are blitzing, and so it causes the jump by the offensive line, and I think pretty much everyone jumped there. So, Ben, don't break Edinburgh's defense. Semper Gumby. Handoff again now to number four. Breaks through the middle here. Knocks the, the umpire off his feet as he comes through. Gets down to about the, call it the seven-yard line. Yep. So that will be now a new set of downs for Lake Erie College here inside the 10-yard line looking to score. Three receivers here near side, one far side running back. Again, they go back to the well, and he gets – he's down on the – One-yard line. One-yard line. He got hit in the backfield, but he was able to spin out of it. That they got to find a way to stop Desmond Turner of Lake Erie. He has been killing them on offense so far. Just an absolute running machine. Same setup as they had last time. One receiver up top, three down. Hand off again. Went to the well again and again. He stopped now in the backfield for a loss of a yard. Now it's going to be third and two. Three minutes and 37 seconds to go in the half. If Edinburgh can get a stop right here, that would be huge. You have to think they're going to be going back up the middle with Turner, though. I mean, it's worked. Two receivers far side, two receivers near side. Now brings one in motion down to the far side. Looking right to throw. Throws for the corner and just overthrows him. But there is a flag on the field. I don't know if they're going to call a hold here against Lake Erie. It was by the... Or is it contact for, like... It was thrown kind of in the middle of the play. Uh, I don't know if it's... They're going to call it a false start on Lake Erie? That doesn't make much sense. I, I'm i not sure. I didn't see it. I was trying to watch the action at the line. Even Lake Erie seems a little bit confused here. And he declined it. And so it's a false start. Would have been a, a 10 yard loss, but Edinburgh is going to decline, and so they're going to stay at the two yard line, and now Lake Erie is going to go for the field goal. Try to make up some points. Hmm. So, Edinburgh, Ben, don't break. Give up three points, not seven. I mean, again, I'll take it. It ain't pretty, but it's working, Gabe. Oof. Here's a snap. Kick is up. And no good. No good. He missed the chip shot kind of from the extra point line. And Edinburgh knew that was no good as soon as it was kicked. We had players running off the field screaming, no good, no good. And now with three minutes exactly to go in the first half, Edinburgh is going to have the chance 
to go down the field, score, and then get the ball at halftime. After halftime, that's after say. yeah, because they'll get the because they kicked off, so they'll receive to start the second half of the game. We're gonna go ahead and step away here real quick for a 30 second break. You're listening to coverage of the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. Nope, no, we're not. We're gonna stay right here. I like because they're coming right back. I thought they were gonna take a little bit longer than that, but what do I know? All right, so now the offense is back out on the field. Jake Sisson, two receivers here near side, two to the far side. Walter Fletcher in at his left hip in the shotgun. Checks the play. Now he's got the one that he likes. Changes the coverage. Ball snap. Fake the handoff. Thrown in for a gain of about seven yards. Yeah. Right around seven yards. They have plenty of time. I think they're going to rely on Jake Sisson's arm for this drive, though. But they have two minutes and 40 seconds to get down the field, try to get into field goal range, try to tack on a couple more points before yeah, the half. Yeah, you're, you're up 10 nothing here going into halftime. The clock is your friend at this point. Just take your time. Pick them apart. Again, same set. Two, two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Lake Erie College kind of showed their hand there with a little bit with a blitz. Walter Fletcher in at Jake's left hip. Jake in the shotgun. Ball snap. The give is to Fletcher, and nothing doing as Lake Erie College manages to get in the backfield and stops him short. Third down now and four yards to make. Again, Edinburgh going with the same package. Two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Only difference is Fletcher now switches over to Jake's right hip. Rolls right, throws right, makes it out to Clark. Clark is across the 30-yard line. For a first down, are they waving it off or no? Yep, yeah, first down. I think if you're Edinburgh offense, you you have to go hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Uh, you say the clock is your friend. I don't like how you played the first the first half. I don't think the coaches are happy with how you played. You want the points right now. Take them while you can get them. Yep, three receivers now, near side, one receiver, far side. Jake looking right, looking to throw. Dumps it off to Clark. Clark managing to make it out to the 40. Ooh, that's a weird hit. That was a very, very late hit. If you're going to call Edinburgh on that, that same judge called it on Edinburgh. And that was a kind of a lead with the head while he's already down hit. I did not like that whatsoever. No, uh-uh. I mean, he kind of got his shoulder down in there, but still he was, he was aiming for the kid's head. I'm surprised there wasn't more of an outrage from Edinburgh. I think there may be a discussion coming here soon. Nope. All right, so now they have one receiver here near side, three receivers far side. Jake Sisson now with, I believe that's Rob Bell in at running back. Yep, Rob Bell will be in at his left hip here. Jake in the shotgun, ball snap, looks right, throws right, has a man open, but he's interfered with. Are they going to throw the flag? The... Cornerback never looked back. Oh, now they get a flag. There's a flag somewhere, but the cornerback never looked back. He was looking at the wide receiver, putting his arms That's up. in the backfield. That's in holding territory. One minute and 32 seconds to go in the first half. It's going to be a third down unless the penalty lets them redo it or moves them up to a first down. Still no call. A lot of discussion from the refs. That makes me think that maybe it was a roughing the passer and they're discussing mm -hmm. on if it actually was. Yeah. Not exactly 100% sure how those. Now they're going to call holding against Edinburgh. I think it was unnecessary roughness. It's they're going to call it on both sides, unnecessary roughness. It looks like it was holding, but from, like, he's going away from us. And But I think I heard unnecessary roughness. It was on both sides. And so Lake Erie isn't happy about it. I mean, they should be pretty happy they got away with a, a close uh, pass interference and a definitely late hit on the play before that. So all that negated, third down and three. Jake now has two receivers to his right. 
one here near side, and Walter Fletcher back in at his right hip. Look, is the give to Fletcher. Fletcher up through the middle, makes about a five-yard dash here. Good enough for the first down. Enbro with a fresh set of downs and stopping the clock with 127 left to go in the half. Your score, Enbro fighting Scots 10, Lake Erie College 0. Ball snap. Assistant looking to throw. Throws it into Fletcher. Fletcher makes it out across the 50. Bumbling, stumbling, quick bang, bang play. Of the first seven yard gain. Clock is still running now. Edinburgh has two timeouts, but I think they're going to save them a little bit until they get close. So they absolutely need them. They have now two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Fletcher in at Jake's left hip in the shotgun ball snap. Jake's looking downfield. Takes a throw over to Tanaz. Tanaz is greeted by Dylan Starks, the DB. That is all on Jake Sisson. He left his receiver out to out to hang. He It was yeah. way overthrown, so Tanaz had to jump up, and then he got hit hard. But there is a fighting Scott down on the field. It is not Tanaz. It is away from the action there. I'm not sure who it is yeah, down, but he is number. still there. And Coach Bradford did not like that hit, I don't think. He was out on the field screaming at the refs, but that one's on Jake. Yeah, he kind of yeah he left him out there to dry, but, I mean, you know, you're not doing your job right if you're not the coach. That was Tanaz that was down. So he he got hit over there, got up, ran a little bit. I think it might have been the air knocked out of him maybe. He got off and running. Yeah, he took his helmet off, so he'll be out for at least one play to get checked out by the trainers there. But he took a lick. Ball on the Lake Erie College 49-yard line. 48 seconds left to go here in the half. That brings the offense back out. And number 19, Corin Williams out there for Tanaz, and nobody's going to run back out. Two receivers far side, one near side. Jake rolling out, rolling to his right, throws right, airs it out, but just couldn't get there. Just overthrown. Fourth and three now, 41 seconds to go. you got to think they're just going to punt it away and hold off for halftime. I mean, you're, you're up 10. They made it down. They're on the opponent's side of the field. They're on the 49, but play it safe. Go into halftime with the lead. Make some adjustments. We'll see here. And you get the ball at the second half. Yep, that's what they're going to do is Jake hops back. Little pooch punt real high. Going to land about the 25-yard line for Lake Erie College as Edinburgh downs it there. 38 seconds left to go here in the half. Your score, Edinburgh Fighting Scots 10, Lake Erie College 0. We're going to go ahead and take that 30-second break right now, right here on the Edinburgh Fighting Scots Sports Network. Your clear choice for area news and entertainment is edinburghnow.com. Student journalists work hard to share information that's important to you, and it's paying off. The award-winning edinburghnow.com provides information and links on a wide variety of topics. Visit for the latest news, stories on the arts and sports, opinions, podcasts, social media, and more. edinburghnow.com. Your clear choice for area news and entertainment is edinburghnow.com. And we're back right here at Sox Harrison Stadium. This is the Edinburgh Fighting Scott Sports Network, and we're bringing you the uh, Edinburgh Fighting Scots versus Lake Erie College. Lake Erie College got the ball back on the 25. One play, they gained about five yards. Now there's all kinds of penalties, as they're going to call a false start on Lake Erie College. Edinburgh looked like their defense was about to bring the house. Mm -hmm. 13 seconds to go. Ball on their own 30. They either have to air it out or knee it out or run it out. But 
they need something big if they want to if they want to score. Yep, they're gonna have to do something. But they haven't had the best of luck trying to air it out. I mean, mm. it's been a no fly zone. They've been picked off twice. Picked mm. off twice, and I think it's I think they've thrown the ball deep four times, and so the ball deep as I mean more than ten yards actually, and so. 50% of the time, Edinburgh picks it off. So I don't think it really matters now with 13 seconds to go if they do pick it off. But it's going to be a timeout. I'm not sure which side took it. Yeah, I I think it's on – I want to say it's Lake Erie. I mean, I wouldn't see why Edinburgh would take the timeout here. And that is – James Clark walking back to the locker room already, and he is limping. He's walking by himself, but he has a limp going right now, and so that's something that hopefully they will tend to at halftime. They probably just got a little, a little banged up, a little bit of tape. There we go. Get right back, back out at there. it again. And I think that is a quarterback change. James Moore, he's got the arm, and so they might be passing it here. Yeah, that's what they usually – they have uh, two receivers to the – up top, two receivers here down the low side. And he is looking to throw. Throws deep down here to right near side. Zero Hendrick is there and intercepts it. Has the ball now about on the 40-yard line. So with four seconds left to go, Edinburgh gets the ball back. But, again, this is really a no-fly zone. No-fly zone. I, you know, one positive to take away from this first half for Edinburgh, a, 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 well, there, there are a few positives. But, you know, your cornerbacks and your safeties are playing – Lights out. Like, I don't think they could have played any better than what they're doing right now. Three interceptions and then two fumbles for Lake Erie, so five turnovers. But they have not completed a pass, I think, over 10 yards Mm -mm. around there. Uh, Edinburgh secondary looking to be one of the best in the PSAC already. Yeah, back in in my Army days, we would call it the Air Defense Artillery, (laughs) or the ADA, and their motto is, if it flies, it dies. I like it. It looks like Edinburgh is going to knee it out. Oh, no. It's a fake knee. A fake knee. A fake knee with Fletcher running the ball. Has room up to the 40. Kind of dancing around here. Cuts it back in. And it makes it down to about the 25-yard line. I like that. Keep Lake Erie up on their their toes. And I don't think they like that. And, no, nope. they're chirping a little bit, but you know that's the way it's gonna go, and they're being separated a little bit. But yeah, they're trying to get them off the field as Edinburgh just streaks across the field and it goes into the locker room. Lake Erie here calling, trying to gather themselves as we move into the halftime. Your score: your Edinburgh Fighting Scots ten, Lake Erie College Storm zero. We're gonna go ahead and take a thirty-second break, and then we're gonna break it all down. And then we got some more stuff for you here during halftime. So don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Edinburgh Fighting Scots Sports Network. You already know WFSC is your home for nonstop rock. But on Saturdays, Fighting Scots Radio transforms into Borough Beats. Three hours of the hottest dance and party remixes from 10 to 1, right here on 88.9 FM. Wherever you are, we've got your playlist covered with Borough Beats on the Pulse of Edinburgh. Alrighty, and we're back here at Sox Harrison Stadium. A little bit of a back and forth game we got going for you here, Gabe. A little bit. Mm. A little bit. I mean, it seems like a lot of a lot of rust. Uh, yeah, it seems like a, a lot, a lot of rust. Uh, Edinburgh, you know, the scoreboard tells us they're up 10 nothing, but watching the game tells us that they kind of got away with a little bit. Five turnovers from Lake Erie. Three of those interceptions are on the no-fly defense that Edinburgh has, and two of them from Hendricks himself. You know, Edinburgh offense, they had that 128-yard run by Walter Fletcher, to get the get the only touchdown of the game, but still not much going on for the on offense. No, and they're really not. I mean, they, the offense kind of looked like they were a little bit uh, sleepwalking through this first half, if you will. Um, the line wasn't as sharp as it needs to be. 
they were letting uh, the bandits through. Uh, they weren't picking up properly. Um, I mean, the receivers looked like they were running routes fairly well, um, but there were balls that were um, overthrown, underthrown, uh, receivers left out to dry, if you will. Um, so there's a lot of adjustments that need to be made here um, for Edinburgh on the offensive side. Defensively, I think they've done really well. I think the defense has been the bright spot in this. As you mentioned, uh, the no-fly zone secondary has been outstanding. Up front, they've gotten a little bit of pressure, but they're still biting a little bit too hard on that triple option, Gabe, that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, the triple option, it is, you know, it's rough for both sides. I mean, you see teams, especially a, a younger Lake Erie team, struggle with it. They have two fumbles, and it's caused by that triple option, fumbling the ball around, and then you have an Edinburgh team that is inexperienced in facing an, an option system like this. And so Lake Erie... Do not know the stats of it yet, the the running stats, but they're letting Lake Erie kind of run all over them a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. They're not staying home. They're not staying true uh, to what they need. Uh, I just I don't think they're like they're not trusting their 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 eyes enough, like mm-hmm. their their assignments, where they're supposed to be. So, uh, and then then you know Lake Erie College is, is exploiting that. But every time Lake Erie College gets in the red zone, they shoot themselves in the foot. Mm-hmm. They either get a stupid penalty or they'll fumble the ball, you know, or they'll try to air it out and they'll be to the uh, um, the interceptions. Yeah, uh, un- unfortunately so far, I have to give the edge of the game to Lake Erie. I mean, they've kind of controlled the tempo on offense and defense. If it wasn't for the five turnovers, and the missed extra point, this game could be much different. But Edinburgh able to get lucky a little bit, up 10 nothing. going to start the second half with the ball. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and send it to you now. Um, we have this interview that you and I conducted on the morning after, which you can catch right here on 88.9 WFSE Fighting Scots Radio, or you can stream it now through the edinburghnow.com a website. But we had Coach Bradford come in. Tuesday morning, Gabe, and talked to us a little bit yeah, about the team and about what to expect for this game, and uh, we had a, a great time talking with him. So we'll go ahead and play that interview for you now, and uh, we'll join you uh, right after that, and we'll uh, go over some more of what halftime adjustments can be made and what we look forward to here in the second half. Sounds good to me. All righty. So here's that interview with Coach Wayne Bradford of the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. It's today on the show we have – Head coach, Edinburgh football, Coach Bradford. Coach, how are you this morning? I'm great. Uh, thank you for having me this morning. It's wonderful to be here. It's great to have you on. Now, you're the, I, I'd say, brand new spanking head coach, but not so brand new and shiny. You've been around since 99? Uh, yes, sir. Been here 18 years. Uh, have worked for four different head football coaches and uh, obviously have uh, always anxiously awaited this opportunity and uh, certainly chomping at the bit to get it going. Excellent. So not a whole lot of changes. You have a lot of um, basically the same crew coming back that you had last year as far as coaching staff goes. Um, Talk about that relationship. How's that working out for you? Staff's been wonderful. Uh, As you said, most of uh, the staff is intact from last year. Uh, Pretty much our entire offensive staff, we were able to uh, take Coach Corey, who was an Edinburgh alumnus and played here in uh, move him from a part-time to full-time position as the offensive line coach, and he did a tremendous job in recruiting and also does a tremendous job with our social media. Uh, so that staff is in taf- intact over there. Defensively, uh, we added a graduate assistant by the name of Lorenzo Hoff, a young man who played corner at Liberty, and uh, he'll be coaching our secondary. We also have a, a local kid by the name of Matt Craig who's helping out. He uh, is from Quarry and played at uh, Hobart for his uncle, who was very successful and Coach Neely's been uh, promoted to defensive coordinator, so we feel really good about our staff. Uh, going forward, also talk about the uh, the athletes you have returning this year, Coach. You got Jake Sisson coming back, Tanaz Gregory uh, on offense, Walter Fletcher coming back at running back. Uh, defensively, you got John uh, Gervin and that crew coming back. So talk about uh, your returners. Yeah, we have seven starters back on both sides of the ball. So uh, obviously, I think uh, 
we are very skilled and uh, athletic at all the skill positions, like you mentioned, offensively. Have a senior quarterback back who's uh, done a tremendous job on the field and in the classroom. Stayed around all summer, so I anticipate him to be even better from a leadership uh, mode. Uh, and then we have great skill with the wide receiver with Tanaz Gregory and James Clark, two of our uh, better receivers back. Walter Fletcher, uh, really good in and out of the backfield, uh, running the football and as a, a receiver. Uh, recruited uh, some very skilled tight ends, uh, so I think down the road you'll see some young guys at that position that are very skilled, and I believe that our offensive line will be greatly improved. They did a tremendous job only giving up 14 sacks and well over 500 attempts, but they look really good, and, and they've got kind of a new attitude this year. And as you said, defensively, uh, we're led mostly by our returners in the secondary. Senior Devon Groves leads a very talented group, and uh, we're pretty deep back there with uh, Devon Groves. Zeril Hendrick, who is uh, very talented and has played multiple positions. Uh, Maurice Sims, Brandon Anderson, uh, just to name a few guys back there. And we've added a couple young kids that we're very excited about. Going to be youthful at the uh, linebacker. We graduated three really good ones, uh, but we've got a couple good ones. But we'll we'll need some young guys to step in there. And on the defensive line, you know, John Gervin, Nick Pettigrew, Derek Dore, David Ballou, Ethan Uppercoe. Uh, and again, we'll need some young guys. We recruited three really talented defensive linemen that I think will have to contribute as well. Right. So you have who's who am I going to look for? Who are my diaper dandies? Who are my my freshman standouts that? New coming in. Well, Vitaly Gurman at center, who was uh, redshirted last year, is going to be uh, tremendous. I, I think he's got all the physical tools to be as good a center as anyone in the league. So you'll see him. At the tight end position, we have a couple guys. Uh, Devon Brown could be a guy to really look for. He's about six foot six and extremely skilled. Uh, uh, on the uh, defensive side of the ball, DeAndre Dowdell is doing some great things for us at nickel. Uh, we also have Deontay Bradley and uh, Billy DePaul playing some safety for us. Up front, we've got uh, Joey Lewin, Xavier Fisher, Jason Eubank, three guys there. And at the linebacker position, we've got a couple good ones, Ryan Bischoff out of Menor, Ohio, and Connor Kelly out of Buffalo. Uh, so we've got quite a few young guys that uh, could really be impactful. And again, this is Tubby and Gabe, and we're talking with head coach Wayne Bradford of the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. Gabe, you have some questions for coach? Yeah, I definitely do. So on the morning after, we, we always say that rankings don't matter, especially Tubby likes to throw it out, especially, especially preseason rankings. But, I mean, after two years ago, a kind of disappointing season and the blow-up last year, how does it feel to not be taken for granted? How does it feel not to be kind of the – kind of the underdog. You're ranked 30th in the country right now and third in the piece that PSAC West, that hard PSAC West. Obviously, it, it, it feels great. We're actually fourth in the West. I, I, voted, I voted for us for third. <laughs> uh, um, I, but, think you, uh, I think we should be third. We're fourth in the West. Um, you know, obviously, you're, you're exactly right. Preseason rankings are, are really just public relations. It's great for our university, our program, our athletic department to get that recognition. I believe it helps us in recruiting, not only in the athletic department, but as a university as a whole and creates a lot of excitement around the program. So we're, we're thrilled with all the preseason accolades, but we understand uh, that, you know, each week you have to perform mm -hmm. up to your level of expectations. And just like last year when we were picked eighth, anything can happen. Uh, so you really can't rest on your laurels. You can't really harp on what you did last year. Each team is a new team. Each year is a new year. Uh, going forward, so now we're looking at our first game coming up this Saturday right here at Sox Harrison. We have Lake Erie College coming in the storm. Now they're a team, I believe, if I looked it up last year, they kind of they had struggled a little bit, um, much like uh, Edinburgh did a couple years ago. Um, but this still isn't a team that you want to take lightly either, is it, Coach? No. Um, they're in a very similar situation that we were in 15 to 16 with uh, a coaching change, turnover. Uh, you know, so they're, they're selling their kids, hey, we can be the Edinburgh of 2017. Um, so I think that makes them a very dangerous opponent. They'll be very skilled, and uh, they'll be competitive. They'll be hungry. They'll be passionate. Uh, just like myself, they have a, uh, a head coach who's been an assistant for a long time. He's been there since the program started in 2007. So this is something that he's waited for. Uh, so he's not going to waste the opportunity either. 
So going forward, when the Edinburgh Fighting Scots take the field on on Saturday, what are they going to look like? Oh, we're going to be uh, passionate. We're going to play with great effort. Uh, we're going to compete for 60 minutes. Uh, we're going to be aggressive in every phase of the game, uh, and we're going to have fun. I think that's what you're going to see out there. And I have to ask, is the – Jumping around on the sidelines on kickoff is the Braveheart drill. Are they all coming back, or are we doing something new this year? Uh, they're all coming back. Uh, yes. Bigger and better versions. Obviously, uh, one of the great competitive advantages that we had last year was our enthusiasm, our passion, our excitement, our belief. And what we've preached is we just want to do all those things better this year than we did last year. So you'll see it all. Yeah, it's – if you have never been to an Edinburgh football game, ladies and gentlemen, this is an experience. Mm -hmm. This is an event. This is something that you need to put on your bucket list and come out. I mean, you'll, you'll hear the pipes are calling. They'll be coming down off the hills. You'll hear the boys getting riled up. I mean, it's, it's worth it. I mean, I, I have a hard time trying to contain myself and remaining professional in the broadcast booth. So this, yeah. may, be, this may be interesting as Gabe and I will be on the call uh, this Saturday, for some odd reason, you can't get out to Sox Harrison. It's going to be great football weather come Saturday. There's no excuse not to come out. The price is right. The location is beautiful. Need to get down here and uh, support your guys. But if you can't make it, you can listen to our broadcast of it right here on WFSE and also on ETV. And I believe Edinburgh had the best attendance record in the PSAC last year, so it's going to be a packed house like it was for pretty much every home game last year. So get there early also. Yeah, over 4,000 screaming, fighting Scots. Mm -hmm. So it'll be it, – it's, it's an experience. You definitely have to be a part of it. Coach, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, thank you. And, thank uh, you. We're really looking forward to everyone coming out. As everyone said, 76 degrees and sunny, no precipitation. Our parents will begin tailgating at 9 a.m. We'll have a, a – whole bunch of class of 2018 recruits on campus so um no excuse not to come out and watch the 16th ranked fighting scots take on the lake erie storm how go can, burrow how, how can the people get a hold of you though on so you mentioned coach Corey in the social media uh give a shout out to your social media like where, where can they find you at? sure we're uh on twitter at edinburgh football is our twitter name and all of our coaches have twitter handles i'm at, at coach bradford one on Facebook, we have uh, Fighting Scots, Edinburgh Fighting Scots Football is one page. We also have an Edinburgh Football Alumni page. Our parents have a page. Obviously, our athletics website, GoFightingScots.com. Just check on football. We're on Snapchat, Instagram. So, so we're out there. Just punch in Edinburgh Football, and you'll find the Fighting Scots. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. We Thank appreciate you. you coming in. And we're back right here at Sox Harrison Stadium. I'm your host, G. Tubby Schmidt. Alongside me is my main man now, currently, and for the rest of the year. Wow. Gabriel G. Money Hypes. We're bringing you all the action as Edinburgh Fighting Scots are taking on the Lake Erie College Storm. I get to be your main man for only one year and one year only, but we finally got some stats up in here. Tubby, what... What jumps off the paper to you? Uh, the, immediately right off the paper is Jake Sisson. Nine completions at 26 attempts and one interception for 77 yards. Longest pass, 17 yards. That, those are not the stats we are hoping for to start the game, especially when you called him as your offensive player that needs to step up. I, I'm kind of surprised that uh, this game is – kind of more even than I thought it was in a lot of ways. First downs are even up 10-10, rushing yards 114-94 in favor of Lake Erie. Uh, passing yards are n netted at 77. That's not a good thing, though, because Lake Erie has passed the ball significant, significantly less than Edinburgh. Um, but other than that, I mean, it, it's close, but, you know, I was expecting Lake Erie to have a little bit more, but the thing that really jumps out is five turnovers for Lake Erie, one for Edinburgh. That is that is huge for Edinburgh right now. If they did not have those five turnovers, who knows what this game would have been. Right, and you look at the rushing yards, um, 29 attempts for Lake Erie College for a net of 114 yards. Edinburgh, 14 attempts for 94 yards. 
uh, offensive plays and yards you're looking at. Lake Erie College, 42 attempts for 191 yards. Edinburgh, 40 for 171 yards. Now, rushing, I mean, Walter Fletcher is having himself a pretty good game. He has 12 rushes for 109 yards. The reason why we're not over 100 yards in rushing, I was like, what is this? What is this? There's minus 17 yards for that snap over Jake Sisson's head. They're counting, so uh, they're counting that. But Walter Fletcher has been a one of the lone high points of this offense. The wide receiver crew is doing well. I'm hoping um, the offensive line got a, got a yelling, too, in that uh, locker room, and I hope Jake Sisson got just as much as an earful because they got to come out, and they got they really need to come out and score and set the tempo for this first half. If they come out and get a three and out like they have been, who knows what this game is going to go because it's only 10 nothing. You don't yeah, have any like, comfort. Yeah, like my granddaddy would say, I believe that the uh, Coach Limbaugh took his offensive squad and had it come to Jesus' time, if you will. Yep. And uh, Just like your granddad said. Just like granddaddy said, have a come to Jesus time. Boy, we're going to have a come to Jesus if you don't get some get right. So, But if you are listening and you want to watch, we have a full, we have a lot of people watching right now on our YouTube page on Edinburgh Now. Uh, you can find out on edinburghnow.com or you can search on YouTube, Edinburgh Now. Watch us live. You can also listen to us on there also. We can keep on listening to WFSC wherever you are going on the go. Right, but should you have to run out and, you know, work on your honey-do list or go grab some groceries or something, you can still listen to us on your mobile devices via the Nobex and TuneIn radio apps. Uh, we'll bring you the rest of the game here. About a minute and a half left to go here in halftime. Both teams are back on the field. Edinburgh Fighting Scots coming out. Bagpiper on the field. You know what it's time for, Gabe. It's time for the Braveheart drill. And Coach Bradford said he was switching it up a little bit this year. I'm not quite sure what that is, but, you know, I, I, I like when they do the Braveheart drill because it, it gets everybody looking. It gets the team fired up. It gets a good momentum for the first half. Yeah. For the second half, excuse me. Yep, and they're going one on one here uh, with Big. Uh, that's Xavier Fisher on for the defense, and I believe it's number 72, uh, Vitali German, the uh, freshman center, uh, going at it. Now they're bringing in some other guys, trying to get the team and the crowd fired up. This is something that we've seen last year. It's now become a tradition here at Edinburgh. Um, it's definitely grabbing the, the attention of some of the Lake Erie College players as they're kind of looking over like, what are these guys, nuts? I mean, not something that's typical for your warm-up uh, here coming out of halftime. So hopefully those adjustments are made. What are some of the other adjustments, Gabe, that you think Edinburgh has to make? Like, it's got to be done. Well, I mean, right off the bat, Jake Sisson has to be better. Nine for 26 with an interception and 77 yards. That's not a good thing. That's really not a good thing. And he really hasn't made a pass over that 10-yard mark. The mark that we've been talking about is that one that was 17 yards, but it was a lot of a lot of uh, running from, I believe it was James Clark that kind of bailed him out there. Might have, actually, it might have been Darren Macy, Macy that, now that I think about it. But um, Jake Sisson has to be better because we can run the ball with Walter Fletcher. He is He's averaging 9.1 yards a carry, and, He's kind of been a workhorse right now. He's a reason why this Edinburgh team is up. But, you know, they always say it lies on the back of the quarterback, and so Jake Sisson has to be better. Yeah, he's got to be the he's got to be the man about town. I mean, he's got to have the broad shoulders, take this team, and be like, all right, look, I got to do better. I'm gonna do better, and I, again, pull pull back, reach back to last year, and become the sniper, Jake Sisson rather than the gunslinger. And I think he got a little bit nervous um, with some of these guys breaking in, although they haven't given up a sack yet. I believe he's been hurried a number of times, though. And also with the defense, you have to stop that triple option. You have to stop uh, Javarian Smith, uh, who's and, – and, and not Javarian Smith. Javarian Smith has rushed the ball uh, pretty decently, but also Desmond Turner – uh, 11 rushes, 65 yards. He's just been pounding up the middle over and over again. Right, along with Antoine Harris, who has uh, 32 yards on seven attempts. They have three runners right now above um, double digits, above 20 yards each. 
uh, like you mentioned, uh, Turner with 65, Smith with 45, and Antoine Harris with 32. They got to find a way to shut this option down. And we're about ready to get set here. That's another the 15 minutes are on the clock. Your score: Edinburgh 10, Lake Erie College 0. And Lake Erie College kicking off now, deep into Edinburgh territory into the five. Tanaj Gregory with the return. Almost breaks through, comes out to about the, I want to say, the 28-yard line. Stalza was a little slow getting up there. I hope he hasn't getting trouble from that hit at the end of the first half. But no jumping around on the sidelines for that kickoff. No, they were all business-like for that one. Just kind of watching and letting it happen. Maybe they'll... Maybe they must have gotten a, a real stern talking to. Yeah, maybe they they finally figured out that, hey, it's time to settle down and play some Edinburgh football. Mm-hmm. As the offense comes back out onto the field now, Jake Sisson has two receivers here near side, one far side, and I believe that's Gaelic in at his left hip here. Nope, that's Fletcher. Busts it up. Fletcher gets up there for about a gain of five here. On first down, ball moved to about the 31-yard line. Six yards to make here for first down. Jake in the shotgun, one receiver, far side, two near side. Fletcher here in on at his left hip. Changing the play up now, switches Fletcher over to the right side. Ball snap, looking left, throws deep, has a step, and just overthrows his receiver. That's Blake Reddick again, out for wide receiver. Just, I mean, it, it was a, a pretty spiral and a, a good speed on that ball, just probably about two to three steps overthrown and disappointing because the wide receiver definitely had some space to make that catch. Same setup again. Two receivers near side, one far side. Fletcher in at his hip on the left side. Jake looking right, throws, dumps it off to Fletcher. Fletcher has running room, breaks through at the 40-yard line. Good enough for a first down. Column stopped on like the 42, we'll say. Nope, they're going to call it at the 41. I thought he had the 42, but apparently my opinion doesn't matter. Close enough, Tommy. All right. So, again, two receivers here near side, one far side. Walter Fletcher in at the right hip of Sisson. Sisson now looking left. Nothing there. Dumps off. No, intercepted by Lake Erie College, and there's a flag down, but he fumbles it. I think it's going to be coming back anywhere on a, on a late hit on the quarterback, roughing the passer. But, I mean... <laughs> That's Lake Erie for you. They've, been, they've just been shooting themselves in the foot. Even if it doesn't get called back, it's still going to be Edinburgh ball because they picked it off. That would be and fumbled it. That would be Nick Kirshner, linebacker, senior, six one one ninety out of Manor, Ohio. I don't know what it's going to be. Actually, I just watched the replay, uh, and it didn't look like it was a late hit. I don't know what the call is going to be. Either way, it should be Edinburgh ball. some discussion with the ref and the head coach for Lake Erie. Are they trying to – still don't exactly know who this is on. I was trying to figure out. Now we're getting some – looks like a holding against Edinburgh. So it's going to be a 10-yard penalty – but it's going to be first down, and now first and 20 after the pick, and then fumble and recovered from Edinburgh. Confusing. But is it going to be first and 10? No. The, the chain crew is having a trouble, trouble, t- trouble too. Okay, so they're going to stay where they are. They're going to knock. A, I'm really confused, Tubby. Yeah, this is. Because uh... that wasn't where the fumble was picked up. It was picked up there, but then there's no holding penalty. Maybe it's the – maybe it, I don't know, but all that matters is Edinburgh has the ball on their own 31-yard line, first and 20. 
two receivers here near side, one far side. Walter Fletcher in at Jake's right hip. In the shotgun now. Ball snap. Jake looking right. Throws right. Has a step. Receiver just can't come up with the ball. That's Darren Massey trying to make the play here at right around the 40-yard line. Diving. Laying out for that one. Now second down and 20 to go for the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. Good coverage. Just Again, just a little overthrown. Matt. Darren Macy might have had it, but um, we won't know. We won't know. Some things we'll never know. Great effort for the dive, though. Again, same set. Two receivers near side, one far side. Running back in at the hip of assistant. Assistant looks left. Dumps it off to Fletcher, and Fletcher is greeted immediately by number 13, Jermichael Ice on the defensive back. A freshman, 6'8", from Gadsden, Alabama. This drive has been back-to-back. Overthrow by overthrow by Sisson, and then a little dump pass to Fletcher. Fletcher was able to do something with it last time. This time it was overthrown, and then a little dump pass to, to Fletcher, but nothing happening that time. So again, two receivers here near side, one far side. Walter Fletcher in at the left hip. Jake rolls to his left, throws left into double coverage. Ball tipped again. They're not going to call interference on that. Definitely a lot of contact right there. Probably could have been a pass interference. Was a catchable ball, but they're going to get nothing from the ref. Yeah, not, cr- a, not a lot of penalties in this game. Uh, there's been three yeah, they, for Lake Erie, excuse me, and two for Edinburgh. It's now fourth and 24 to go. Jake's still in there. Look for the Pooch kick again as Lake Erie setting up for it. Watch they do some razzle dazzle now and not do it. Nope. He backs up where he's going to. And he does kick it away. Kicks it away from the returner, but he's able to make the play and he's greeted right there at the 43 yard line. Does Edinburgh not have a punter? That is the real question. You would think you're not fooling them now. I think they're setting. I think they're trying to set something up. Kind of like run, 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 pass, or pass, 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 right. run. Right. So I think they're going to try. I'm sure they got to play out of that pooch formation, where it's not going to be a pooch. But now Lake Erie College now takes over on their own 43 yard line. Edinburgh defense back on it here. They're going with that jet, that double stack, wide receiver. That again, this is where they got the interception last time. Fakes the handoff, Still looking to throw, almost a sack. Quarterback has to take it on the run, makes about eight yards on the run, or four, five yards on the run. Yeah, about a six yard gain to put him on their own 49 yard line with 12 minutes and 24 seconds to go in the third. Quarter. Yep, quarterback Javarian and Smith is still in the game. Two, three receivers here near side, one far side. Looks to give but keeps it. Makes the first down and some as he gets about another seven yards on that run. It'll be now first down now from the Edinburgh 42-yard line. That triple option, they're starting to run it to the T a little bit. The Edinburgh defense got to know what man is theirs in any circumstance. If it's going to the one, the two, or the three, it needs to be caught by the same guy any time. But an Edinburgh player is going to go down and then right back up. Yeah, that's going to be number 52, uh, Trey Hall, the inside linebacker. A little dinged up on the play. Um, Wasn't going to be able to make it off the field in time before Lake Erie College. Lake Erie College is really trying to step up the tempo here, um, trying to push the pace a little bit with this triple option, really make uh, Edinburgh work for it. And I think, I, you know, he was a little hurt a little bit here. Now they're going to switch sides here. Zero Hendrick moves over to the far side, coming here near side is Aaron Rodgers. So his trips to the top. Running back, well read here by, that's number 43 on the tackle, 
That's A.J. Holton, the outside linebacker. He had that the entire way. Running with uh, the running back there, Antoine Harris, for no gain. Second down now, seven to go. That's the way it needs to be that. We'll talk about it after this play, but with this triple option. Yep, pitch. They pitch it out now. They pursue. Nice coverage. Get them stopped. A gain of about three yards on that one. They'll mark the ball down at the 35-yard line. 10.53 left to go here in the third quarter. Your score, Edinburgh Fighting Scotch 10, Lake Erie College Storm 0. But with that last play, A.J. Houghton knew he had the running back the entire time. So even if the quarterback would have taken it there, he was still on the running back. It's somebody else's job to tackle the quarterback, and that's why they got to stop so easily on that last play. And now, guy in motion. And he's going to give it to the guy in motion, the wide receiver, on the outside. And it's going to be a gain of nothing. And Lake Erie is screaming for this late hit, even though we've seen it a couple of times where Edinburgh has gotten hit pretty late, but nothing. I think this ref does not want to call. No, he doesn't penalty. want to call late hits at all. But it's okay, Lake Erie coach. You can just calm down. You got away with some, too. It's all good. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, my friend. Yeah, that was. If I, if I was the ref there, I probably would have th- thrown the flag. Yeah, but, I mean, if you're going to call, I mean, at least they're calling it both ways. Yeah. I mean, i got to give them credit for that. They're not they're not playing favorites here. So, again, into the setup, still in a quarterback is Javarian Smith for Lake Erie College. He's got two receivers near side, two receivers far side, running back at his hip. Looking to throw now. And they're screaming for the pass. That was a play on the ball. Wow. And with the plea, I guess if you beg hard enough, you'll get your flag. And now Lake Erie getting some some calls. I mean, that was – I don't think that was pass interference mm, that was, at he, all. He but. was playing the ball as the ball came. He didn't contact the receiver until the ball got there. That's a good play by the linebacker. Young man, you'll watch that tape tomorrow morning. I don't think Coach is going to eat your lunch for that one. I think it was a good play. That was number 43, A.J. Holton, the outside linebacker on that coverage getting dinged for the pass interference, which, if our opinions matter for anything, wasn't really pass interference. But apparently, much like whose line isn't anywhere, our opinions doesn't matter. (laughs) All right, so now they're into a different setup. Smith still in at quarterback. Got two receivers here near side. One far, far side. Running back in on his right hip here. And the shotgun fakes the give. Looking to throw again. Can't find anybody open. But then dumps it off to number 31. That'll be Mitchell Tilly. Enough for a gain for a first down. And they're inside the red zone. Now this is where they've had bad luck before. It's now first and goal as Lake Erie College takes over at the 10-yard line. Nope, they're going to move it to the nine-yard line. I thought he made it to the, to the nine. So, again, Smith still in. He's got three receivers far side, one near side. Has his running back, Harris, on his left hip to give. Is the Harris? Nope, decides to keep it, but Gervin is there to greet him at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if we can get another stop. Down in the red zone for Lake Erie, they have gotten nothing so far to show for their offense this game. And they've put together a pretty drive, uh, bailed out a little bit with that pass interference on the last set of downs, but they have a real opportunity to get their first points of the game. Is that going to be an offsides? False start. False start against Lake Erie College. Again, backs him up out of the red zone here on second down. Lake Erie, I mean, if if we're just calling a fair game, they are just shooting themselves in the foot. They've had opportunity after opportunity to put a lot of points on the board, and so far they haven't. And we've seen their kicker so far. They've missed a chip shot kind of from the extra point line. If they get stopped right here, all four downs, all three downs, I should say, will they actually go for the field goal? The field goal. Nope, looking to give it out, and he's going to be sacked 
The ball pops out with a late hit at the end. You know, is that big John Gervin in on the sack? I don't think that was a late hit. I mean, you saw the quarterback. He was trying to get out of it, and then he fumbled the ball a little bit while he was going down on that hit from Gervin. That was a nice play by the Edinburgh defense and a nice call from the defensive coordinator we talked to before the game and yep. bringing the house kind of. Yep. Well, it's about time. I mean, I've been waiting all game to watch Gervin eat, and it's about time he got himself a plate of food there because he, he's been threatening all game, and I think that's kind of the, the M.O. here of our defensive line. They just end up wearing you down. Again, three receivers here near side. Looking to throw, but he's sacked again. Eating this time, up now. This time coming in is big number 52, Trey Hall, inside linebacker, breaking through. On the rush, so now it's 14 and 24 to go. Now they bring on their kicker who missed the chip shot from inside the 10. Perhaps now that he's got a little distance to him, the wind is semi at his back. It's moving kind of crisscross here from left to right. Here's the snap. Kick is up. It's and it's good. good. So he can make a, 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 a long one, but he can't make the short one. 10-3 to 3 with 6.40 to go in the third quarter. We got ourselves a game. Now we got ourselves a game. The defense is no longer pitching a shutout. I know Coach Neely would have really had enjoyed that. Like That's something you could have hanged your hat on there, pitching a shutout here in your, in your home opener. But uh, Lake Erie gets three on the board. But, again, if it's you know six as opposed to three, I'll take the three. <laughs> ben, don't break. But, um, so that's still a good, a good effort by the defense, not only getting them stopped. I mean, they had the penalty back them up, but those two sacks were huge. You know, again, defense coming up huge when they need it. Now Lake Erie College on to kick. But Edinburgh hasn't sent out their receiving team yet. Okay, now their receiving team comes out. I thought maybe they wanted to take a break or something. Let's see if the sidelines will give them any support like we're used to seeing. Nope, doesn't seem like they're going to gather up. Nope. And that'll be Zerl Hendrick and Tanaz Gregory are back to receive on their own five-yard line. It'll be Tanaz taking the kickoff up above the 30 here, out to the 37-yard line. And there's going to be a flag, a late flag coming in. So I, I, I think the refs have been calling a poor game, but it's been, it's been very even. Now they're throwing kind of flags left and right. I, I would say neither team has gotten a real advantage because of the, of the, the, the calls so far. Right. I don't know if anybody told them there's not a quota of flags that you have to make in a game. <laughs> it's okay to keep them in your pocket, fellas. There might be. Are you a, a Division Two referee, Tubby? No, but I read a lot online, and I did stay at a Holiday Inn once. <laughs> so I like that. Your score now, 10-3, to Edinburgh Fighting Scots over Lake Erie College Storm. That penalty is against Lake Erie, and they're moving the ball up. Now across the 50 in the Lake Erie College territory. It was a 15-yard penalty for unnecessary roughness. Yikes. All right, Jake Sisson now in the shotgun. Three receivers here near side, one far side. Walter Fletcher in at his left hip. Ball snap. The give is to Fletcher. Fletcher up through the middle, makes it up to about the 40, 42, 43-yard line. Gain of about five. Yep, gain of about five. So now again, same setup, three, three near side, two far side. Throws this time. Off to Tanaz Gregory. Tanaz Gregory across the 35-yard line. Good enough for a first down. So brand new, fresh set of downs, and the Edinburgh Fighting Scots are beginning to roll here at Sox Harrison Stadium. Two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Walter Fletcher in at Sisson's right hip. Snaps the ball, looking downfield, throws right. Tanaz Gregory wide open at the 20. Makes it to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. He's in there, folks. That's 16 oh, yeah. now for the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. 
and just like that where we thought the Edinburgh offense was dying, you know, maybe the, maybe the, the strategy is maybe we should give the other team maybe some points, spark a fire underneath, and then all of a sudden two great passes from Jake Sisson. That one right there to Denaz Gregory, wide open, was able to get in and put his moves to work and get in there for the touchdown. Wow, three-play drive, but it was a pretty drive. That was pretty. It, that's the type of work I like to see out. Now Mike Kushma on for the extra point. Kick is up. And good. So that's your score now. Edinburgh Fighting Scott 17, Lake Erie College Storm 3, with 548 left to go here in the third quarter. We do have an Edinburgh player down. We're going to go ahead and step away for about 45 seconds here on the Edinburgh Scots Sports Network. So you don't have to miss even a minute. It's the Fighting Scots in action on the Edinburgh Sports Network. On the radio at 88.9 WFSC and online at edinburghnow.com. Video of many home games is also featured on ETV. This game broadcast is underwritten in part by... Bonnell's Auto Group, featuring collision services and auto sales in Erie and Fairview and auto glass replacement and repair along with full rod shop services and restoration in Fairview. Information on each service can be found on the web at bonnellsauto.com. And we are back right here at Sox Harrison. Player coming off the field was number 59, I believe. That's a long snapper, Josh Schmidt. No relation to me, by the way, but he does spell it correctly. But he is okay. He walked off on his own feet, on his own stamina. And so Edinburgh, looking a little gloomy. Momentum is back in their side of the stadium, 17-3 to with 5.48 to go in the third quarter. That's this Edinburgh team. They score quickly when they need to, and they can make a game that's close, a blowout, very, very quickly. Yep, and now they're getting hyped over there on the sideline, gathering up, getting a big chomp, jumping around. Cushman with the kick. is up and high, high kick. About to the five-yard line. Lake Erie College bringing this one back. There's already a penalty flag on the field yep, as I... he's greeted at the 28-yard line. Yep, blocking the back going to be on Lake Erie. That one's pretty clear, and I believe that is number eight complaining about it, but I don't think I, I think it was – it might have been number six. Yeah, it's going to fall upset, on but deaf it was, ears. It was definitely a block in the back, yep. They should have to distance to the goal on that. Uh, yep. There we go. So, you know where that puts him, Gabe? Right back in Pick Sixville. Pick Sixville, Safety Town. No, not quite. You got to get well, back. Well, I'm just I'm, I'm listing all of the opportunities. Safety the, Town, yeah. Their next uh, Pick Sixville is Safety Town, and then a little bit down the road is who knows. I'm trying, um, to, I'm trying to get the surrounding Mecca area. Yeah, the greater, the greater Mecca area. All right, defense Sox on Harrison. the field. Now Moore back in at quarterback. Looking to throw, looking right. Receiver's open. Caught, but did he step out of bounds? Mm -hmm. That was a pretty, pretty play. I mean, a pretty throw from – I'll call him their, their passing quarterback is now back in the game, number 11, James Moore for Lake Erie. That was a wheel route by – the stats are now updating. We will. Who was who was that pass to? I did not uh, see it, but back on the game. The hands off to number four. Number four breaking now outside, out across the 40, 45 to fifty. I finally brought down by number nine, Brandon Anderson, the strong safety. That Desmond Turner has those wheels. He got right outside and then broke a few tackles and was able to get a very large gain. A very very shifty runner. As he's out across the fifty at the forty nine. So brand new set of downs in the Edinburgh Territory. Lake Erie College starting to roll here. Three receivers near side, one far side. Give is the number 21 up through the middle. Gained about 
want to say six yards on that one. Four minutes, 41 seconds to go here in the third. Your score, 17 for the Edinburgh Fighting Scots, three for the Lake Erie College. Again, three receivers here near side, one far side. Looking to throw, throws deep to the right side. Oh, led his receiver, left him out to drive. Big hit by Zero Hendrick as the ball reached. The uh, intended receiver was number six, Riley Fredrickson, uh, freshman from Holly Springs, North Carolina. No fly zone, no, no deep passes down the field. Keep everything in front of you, and that's what the defense has been doing. Two receivers now near side, one far side with the two running backs set. This is where things get a little goofy. Looks a hand off and does, but perfectly read by Ethan Upperco in on the stop for a loss. Again, defense stepping up and making a play here. Fourth down and five yards to go. Fourth down, I would say seven yards to go. Now it was a loss of two on the play, and I think they're going to bring their punter out. Do you fake it here, Gabe? Do you fake it? With four minutes to go in the third quarter, I mean, I like the field position that you're in, and then your defense has been doing pretty well. But I, mean, I think you punt it away because we have not seen Jake Sisson drive down the field yet and score. Bad snap. Barely gets the punt off. Zero's going to let this one go. Goes into the end zone for a touchback. What would you have done there, there Tubby? Would you I, have faked it? I probably would have. I mean, you're down by you're down by two scores anyway. It's going to take you two touchdowns to get there. I think with, we we saw what Jake Sisson did last time in that area of the field where he got the ball. I don't think you risk. It. I think you punt it down and say, can Edinburgh complete a whole drive? Because I think if they get this drive going down here, if they get 80 yards down the field and complete, because they haven't had a full drive yet. Right. Both touchdowns they've scored have been and. Very good field positioning. So you kind of put on Edinburgh and say, hey, can you score? And if they do, I think Edinburgh is in a really good position to win All right, this game. Jake, Jake now out with the offense. Three receivers, far side, one near side. Fletcher in on his hip to give his to Fletcher. Fletcher straight up through the middle, out to the 30-yard line. Good enough for a first down and a fresh set of downs. Fletcher, he is good at reading the hole. I thought there was a big opening, but – he did not, and as soon as I, as soon as he could have gone through it, the hole kind of collapsed, and he went around it. That's why he's out there playing right now. Right. Two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Walter Fletcher in at the hip. Looks for a shovel pass. Give us to Fletcher. Fletcher's got room. Out to the 40. Now to the 50. And brought down at the 50-yard line. That's good so, for a first down plus 10 more. That'll be a 20-yard run. That was very, very pretty. It was kind of like, come get me, come get me, Jake Sisson was saying. But as soon as they got close, it was kind of like, here you go, Fletcher. And then Fletcher had all the room in the, in the world to run, and that's what he did. Jake now three receivers near side, one far side. Fletcher in at his hip. The give again. No, that's not Fletcher. That's uh, 35. That's Kyle Gaelic. And he's good for about a – did he make a yard or did he lose a yard? I think he lost a yard. And we've seen Kyle Gaelic, and he is a very, very fast runner. We he, saw him last yeah, year. he's fast, but he's more your north-south runner. Mm -hmm. He's going to take you head on rather than uh, a try to out-juke you, as there is a Lake Erie College player down. Take this minute to let you know we're bringing you all the action live on the Edinburgh Sports Network, thanks to sponsors like Bonnell's Auto Group, featuring collision services in Erie and Fairview, auto glass replacement and repair in Fairview, auto sales in Erie and Fairview, and full rod shop services and restoration in Fairview. Information on each service is on the web, at BonnellsAuto.com. Okay, Jake now bringing the offense back out onto the field. The Lake Erie player that was down was number seven, Jason Rogers. He is walking off on his own weight. He's holding that arm, though, I believe. Jake now two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Jake looking right. Goes the throw, but he's hit. There's a fumble recovered by Lake Erie, and he's off to the races. Finally brought down by Blake Riddick, wide receiver. Otherwise, that would have been catastrophic. No one to give the ball away, Jake Sisson. No one to throw it away. He was holding that ball up, just begging for it to be stripped out, and that is exactly what's happened. 
and it was very lucky that wasn't returned for a touchdown. I don't know what Jake was thinking there. I, I think he just kind of got tunnel vision on it and expecting the play to develop, and it's because those wide receivers will pop open in like a blink second if you can let it go. I know I'm, I know I'm driving the excuse bus here, but it's okay, Tubby. One of us has to. One of us has to be the homer. It might as well be me. All right, so now Lake Erie College takes over on the Edinburgh 11. The defense back out on the field. They brought Smith back in their running quarterback. And the give is the number 21. Has some room here on the outside. Is finally tripped up across the five-yard line, called down at the four-yard line. So Lake Erie College now threatening here with 2.17 left to go here in the third quarter. Your score, Edinburgh Fighting Scott 17, Lake Erie College 3. Smith now two receivers, far side, one near side, running back in, looking left, trying to throw left. Well defended and hit as he throws by Trey Hall, the inside linebacker. And I believe that was number 14 on the coverage. That's Aaron Rodgers, the cornerback. I don't think there's been a time where Lake Erie wide receivers haven't jumped up and started complaining about a, uh, a no call yet. But that was very good defense by Edinburgh secondary there. Yeah, they must have a very good drama program over there <laughs> at Lake Erie. So three receivers here now near side for Smith. None far side. Hands off to number 21, but he's greeted by a whole host. Of red jerseys. And Edinburgh. Ossie Gervin in there. Do you go oh. for it here, Toby? 148 left in the third quarter. Fourth and three on Edinburgh's five yard line. I don't, your kicker missed it from there earlier. I would go for it. Might as well. Edinburgh's defense has kept them in the lead so far. Will they hold them off right here? And there's going to be an They're Edinburgh call timeout. timeout. Yeah. They don't like that look. They don't think they have the right personnel on. Yeah, that wasn't a coach timeout. That was a a player timeout, a couple of them calling for it, wanting to take a break and talk about it. Yep. Speaking of timeouts, we'll go ahead and uh, let me tell you about John's Wildwood Pizzeria, open daily at 105 Erie Street here in Edinburgh. For eat-in, delivery, or takeout, John's menu includes pizza, hoagies, wings, salads, and more. Information is at 814-734-7355 or on the web at johnswildwoodpizza.com. While we still got some time here, I can also tell you about the Edinburgh Hotel Bar, serving a variety of lunch and dinner items every day from their location at 100 Meadville Street in downtown Edinburgh. Information is at 814-734-5103 or online at edinburghhotelbar.com. All right, now that everything that needed to be discussed has been discussed, Defense back out on the field. Lake Erie comes back out. Smith still in at quarterback. Still showing three receivers here near side. A running back, Antoine Harris, on his right hip. Looks in to double check with Coach for the play. Changing the play up now at the line. Still some discussion going on. It looks like some confusion. Trying to draw him offside. Again, another bad snap. Looks to throw. Nobody there. And Edinburgh will stop them. Gets a huge stop. On an incomplete pass. and That was a close one. Edinburgh almost jumping off sides. Wasn't able to. A low snap for Lake Erie. And almost a sack on the play. But no one opened downfield in Edinburgh. They're great secondary coming up big. And, I mean, they started the drive right in Edinburgh's five-yard line territory. Wasn't able to put any points on the board. That is a big testament to this defense. Yep, defense coming up huge. And, again, you know, I kind of figured something like that was coming up because there was a lot of confusion. And, like you said, um, Smith is kind of their, their running quarterback. Mm -hmm. And when he goes to look to throw, that's got to cause a lot of confusion. Jake Sisson now out on the well, with the offense. Has three receivers here near side. Empty far side with Fletcher in at his left hip. The give is the Fletcher. Fletcher coming around that left side. Can't quite turn it up. 
makes it to about the five-yard line. Yeah, if you're Edinburgh right now, you have to be thankful for your defense, and you have to be thankful for some poor play calling from Lake Erie. And that's why Edinburgh is up 17-3 to with one minute and five seconds to go in the third quarter. Yep, same setup now. Three receivers here near side to give us the Fletcher. Fletcher trying to still pound it through. Gain of about two yards. This Edinburgh offense. They showed two drives ago that they're still the Edinburgh offense that we knew last year. But right now, not getting nothing on these last two drives. Now they change it up a little bit. They have two receivers here now near side, one far side. Walter Fletcher in at Sisson's left hip. Jake in the shotgun. Snaps the ball, looking downfield, looking to throw, looking to throw. Finally makes the throw, has a step and caught at the 40-yard line with flags. Boom. I, th I think they're going to – are they going to call it in? Or? That was definitely pass interference on the defense. But they're going to – kind of dragged back. But a great throw from Jake Sisson – was on target, and so That's Edinburgh offense got some life. Jake Sisson making me eat my words, and I hope he keeps on doing it because that was a great pass to get them out of their out of their zone. A great read, a great route, all around great play. I hope it stands. I'm pretty sure it was pass interference on the defense. Yeah, that's Blake Riddick there on the reception. But there is a lot of discussion. No matter what, he caught the ball, so it has to be an offensive pass interference to bring it back. Pass interference defense has declined. And they're calling two pass interferences on the defense. Both declined. And so it's a first down. Yeah, so two pass interferences. Yep, so Edinburgh now setting up shop at the 42-yard line here. 15 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Your score is 17-3 in favor of the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. They're just going to let this clock tick off here and then switch sides. And boom, there's the end of the third quarter. We'll go ahead and step away for a 45-second break here on the Edinburgh Fighting Scott Sports Network. The Edinburgh Sports Network is your source for live coverage of Fighting Scots athletics. Enjoy all of the action on 88.9 WFSE and edinburghnow.com, with many home games also featured on ETV. Support for this game broadcast is provided in part by The Edinburgh Hotel Bar, serving a variety of lunch and dinner items every day from their location at 100 Meadville Street in downtown Edinburgh. Information is at 814-734-5103 or online at edinburghhotelbar.com. Alrighty, and welcome back to Sox Harrison Stadium. I am Tubby. I am on the call here with my good friend, Gabe G-Money Hypes. Hello, Tubby. Bringing, bringing you all the action here for Edinburgh Fighting Scots versus the Lake Erie County, or I'm sorry, Lake Erie College Storm. They're over in Painesville, Ohio. Just a short trip over the border. Still on the 42-yard line here. Edinburgh sets up shop. Has one receiver near side, three far side. Fletcher in at the hip. The, hit, the give is the Fletcher. Fletcher out across the 50. Makes it to the 55, down to the 40, 45. And greeted by Lake Erie College down to about the, call it 31-yard line, 32. So another excellent run. For Walter Fletcher. Again, Jake now has a three receivers far side, one near side. Fletcher in at his left hip. Quick dump off to Tanaz Gregory. Tanaz with some running room. Makes it out to the 10, to the 5, and he's in there, folks. That's another touchdown for Edinburgh. As this Edinburgh offense begins to roll. There we go. Your score now, 23-3. to three. Edinburgh Fighting Scots up over the Lake Erie College Storm. It might be Edinburgh who owns the fourth quarter. We saw that little chant from Lake Erie saying we own the fourth, 
But Edinburgh coming out in the first 30 seconds of putting seven, well, six up on the board right now, hoping for the exclamation point on the extra point. Coming in just a second. Extra point is up and good. Score now 24-3, to three, your Edinburgh Fighting Scots over the Lake Erie College Storm. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and take a a thirty second break here on the Edinburgh Fighting Scots Sports Network. Did your studies keep you from watching the game last night, or was the pull of Netflix just too strong and you forgot about the game? Are you out of town or a graduate of Edinburgh and want to keep up to date on all things Fighting Scots athletics? Have no fear, the Morning After Sports Show has you covered. Right here on WFSE 88.9, every morning from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. with your host, me, Tubby. And me, Drew. With special guests and interviews from the players and coaches that make Edinburgh sports so exciting. All right, welcome back here to Sox Harrison Stadium as the Edinburgh Fighting Scots take on the Lake Erie College Storm after a really a quick, well, well-ran well drive by the Edinburgh offense. Score now 24-3 to in favor of Edinburgh. The kick is up deep into the end zone for a touchback. Looks like he was going to try to field it and bring it out. But Edinburgh was hot on the trails of coverage. So Lake Erie College here will get their chance starting at their own 20. And they're bringing out Jim Moore, as you like to call him, the throwing quarterback (laughs) from Lake Erie College. So we'll see how they decide to set up here. Oh, I'm sorry. They're going to start at the 25, not at the 20. My mistake, folks. It's okay, Toby. It happens to the best of us, right? So Lake Erie now has two receivers here near side, one far side with a Turner, the running back. The give is to Turner up through the middle, and he's finally tripped up about the 32, 33-yard line. So now second down and four yards to make here for Lake Erie College. Lake Erie needs a score here if they want to stay in the game. 14 minutes to go in the game as a whole. Three receivers now. Now a little dump off here to Turner. Red and tripped up. (laughs) God, lucky on that one. That's a shoestring tackle if I ever saw one by Devon Groves, the free safety. I think he thought he got out of there. There, The uh, Desmond Turner kind of put the jukes on and thought he got away, but didn't fool Groves all the way, and he was able to get his shoestrings and bring him right back down to the turf. Yeah, Groves kind of slipped up there towards the end as he broke down on that coverage, and then just... Doesn't matter, there. He got him anyway. Yep, Lake Erie College with three receivers up to the far side, one near side. Moore looking to throw. Now he's scrambling, tries to throw, dumps it off here to number 14. 14 up to the 40 before diving out of bounds. Number 14, that's Joshua Collins, wide receiver, sophomore out of Strongsville. Ohio. Haven't seen much of the triple option for what they've just been doing kind of the two option for uh, for Lake Erie. We'll talk about that in just a second. And the throw from Moore. We've been kind of spectators on that one. Uh, almost- yeah, it was kind of it, it was a pretty good route. I mean, Blizzard mm-hmm. That's uh, Jason Blizzard uh, was the receiver on that one. Had a step, kind of led him a little bit too far. They were in with that two running back set. But Lake Erie has kind of been doing the Paul Johnson, uh, Georgia Tech triple option where they send someone in motion. But they have not been doing that lately. They've just been going with the one option. But here we go. Kind of got saved there on the pass. A wide open Desmond Turner. Knocked down at the line from number 74, Chris o- Chris o- Ocasio. That's a name I haven't heard yet. 
Yeah, Maurice Sims was in on the rush, and then Gervin kind of gifted a ball there. It was like, oh, gee, look what I found, but couldn't maintain possession. Three receivers now on the near side. Ball height. Mark Moore throws complete across the number 81. That'll be David Wright, freshman, 6'3", out of Euclid, Ohio. All these kids coming out of my old stomping ground game. That'll bring up fourth down. It's going to be six yards to go, so they will punt it away. This is the, the point where maybe you think about a fake. <coughs> yeah, but good, but no. Low line away. drive kick. Zero Hendrick comes over like he's going to stop it, but wisely lets it go through as there was a whole host of Lake Erie Storm uh, defenders there raining down upon him. So Edinburgh gets the ball back, call it right around the 19-yard line here. Some here Plenty we go, of- Burrow chance coming from the home crowd. They want to see another score and put this game away. 24-3, to 12-21 to go in the fourth quarter. Jake now brings the offense back out onto the field. Has one receiver here near side. Three receivers far side. Walter Fletcher in at the left hip. Jake in the shotgun to give is the Fletcher. No, pass out to Tanaz Gregory. Tanaz makes one man miss in... Not quite enough for the first down, I don't think, or no. Nope, ref says it's legit. They got a first down. There we go. Move them on up. Fresh new set of downs, just like George and Wheezy, moving on up. Walter Fletcher has been the standout person during this game. He's played one heck of a football game. And to give this time is the Fletcher and go straight up the middle. A little extra blocking here. No harm, no foul. That'll be uh, the center, Vitaly German, just throwing his hands up in the air like, hey, I'm just blocking a guy. Walter Fletcher currently 18 attempts, 156 yards. I might be top of the PSAC after this week. Snap again to give us a Fletcher. Fletcher breaks free out to the almost to the 40 before he's tripped up. He was seeing pay dirt on that one. I think the number five jersey might bring him a little luck this year. He has been playing very – if you remember last year, though, that first game of the season, I think he had 200 yards. Mm-hmm, against St. Joe's in Indiana. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good memory. So one receiver far side, three near side. Fletcher in at Sisson's left hip. The give is to Fletcher, but Fletcher is immediately greeted by two Lake Erie College defenders. That'll be number five and number seven, five, Zach Jude, uh, linebacker, senior out of Canal, Winchester, Ohio, and number seven, Jason Rogers out of Laurel, Maryland. Two receivers now. Jake looking to pass, looking to pass right. Kalik picks it up. Over across the 50 is lifted. Still manages to keep his momentum going forward. That's a nice Catch and run there for Kyle Gaelic. Yeah, that was kind of weird. It was kind of like he was lifted, like kind of like a double leg takedown. Right. But he kind of turned out of it and kept on going a little bit and got an extra yard or two. Again, two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Fletcher back in on the left hip. Or nope, no, Gaelic still in. Gaelic out across the middle, throws across for Tanaz Gregory. Tanaz has it. And out to the 35, 37 yard line. I think I think it was just a little bit of rust on Jake Sisson's arm. This second half, he's looked a lot better. His stats still do not speak for for his usual character, but if you look at just the second half, he has been playing a very good game. Yep, Lake Erie College now calls timeout. They don't have the right package on the field. This Fighting Scots live broadcast is supported in part by the Edinburgh Hotel Bar, serving a variety of lunch and dinner items every day from their location at 100 Meadville Street in downtown Edinburgh. Information is at 814-734-5103 or online at edinburghhotelbar.com. 
Lake Erie College now, still talking it over. So that'll give me time to talk about Bonnell's Auto Group, featuring collision services here in Erie and in Fairview, auto glass replacement and repair in Fairview, auto sales in Erie and Fairview, and full rod shop services and restoration in Fairview. Information on each service is on the web at bonnellsauto.com. Okay, Lake Erie College here. Seems like they got everything figured out. Puts their defense back out on the field. Iron Barrel coming out from the break. Bringing three receivers here near side. Waller Fletcher in at the right hip of Sisson. One receiver far side. Walter Fletcher now with the ball, breaks up, gets up about to the 25-yard line, 26-yard line. Second down and I want to say three to go, two to go, three to go. His offense is a rolling now. Definitely firing on all cylinders. One receiver here near side. Fletcher on the right hip. Three receivers far side. Snap. Little toss out. Nope. Looking for a little razzle dazzle. Almost looked like Massey wanted to throw the ball after he got it, but it just didn't really develop that way. He would have been looking for Blake Reddick on the deep, deep cross. So far this drive, probably their best drive in the game uh, without any big gains. It's been seven plays, 59 yards. Again, three receivers near side, one far side. Fake to give to Fletcher, fires it off to Tanaz. Tanaz makes it out across the 20. But was he down or did he cough up the ball? I think he was down, but, I mean, there's no replay system here. And so it looked like he was stretching down. He was pretty close to the ground as it was when he caught the ball. But I think that was just a ref making a judgment, calling a 24-3 game. Yep. Might as well. Although Coach Bradford is out there pleading his case. and I just watched the replay, which you can watch on edinburghnow.com. Uh, I just watched it happen, and it looked like he was down, but it does not matter now. Lake Erie College comes out with a, uh, Smith as the quarterback. Two running backs on either side, one receiver far side, two receivers near side. He decides to keep it looking to throw, but he's got company coming, dumps it off. And that is number 21, Antoine Harris, the running back out of Youngstown, Ohio, trying to dance the line to get some extra foot, some extra yardage out of it. They're going to call him out of bounds at the, what, 19? Yep. 19-yard line, second and nine, nine minutes and five seconds to go in the game. Edinburgh leads 24 to three. And three receivers here now near side, one far side. The give again, but no, he decides to keep it and makes about a good two to three yards on that one. Now third down and about four to go here for Lake Erie College. I'm sorry, six to go. Close. Yeah. It's hard to see from up here. It, it, it is a little difficult. Two receivers either side. Looking to throw. Complete. And they're going to say the ball came out. Is it Edinburgh's? No, nope. Lake Erie is going to keep it. That would have been their third fumble of the game, I believe. And they're going to move the sticks also. And that's Mitchell Tilly on the reception out of Oxford, Michigan. So now two receivers here near side, one far side looking. Can't find anybody. Tries to make some something magic happen, but gains about a yard. That Edinburgh defensive line coming in hot. Picking up another sack. I believe they're third of the day. Without looking at the stat sheet? Without sure, looking I'll, at the stat sheet. Sure, I'll agree with you. 
I'll call it third. Okay, two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Running back with Smith still in as quarterback. Looks right, throws right, fires quick, finds number 81, makes it out across the 40, down to the 45 before finally being brought down. Again, that receiver number 81 is David Wright, the freshman, 6'3", 200 pounds, out of Euclid, Ohio. I didn't think he was going to come out with that ball. But anyway, two receivers here near side, two far side. Send a man in motion. They fake the give, looks. Big time false start. Flags everywhere. Yeah. Looks like somebody's laundry exploded on the field. Yeah. So we're catching some of the uh, the coaches' traffic. You can hear <laughs> hear them trying to get their uh, their defense fired up there on the Lake Erie College side. All right, two receivers here near side, two far side. Snaps the ball, looks right, throws right. Where right is, is that incomplete? Oh, yes, incomplete. they're going to call it incomplete. That is a great collision, but he is down, number 14, Aaron Rodgers for Edinburgh. A great hit to knock the ball out, but he is currently hurt. Trainers coming on the field, but he's, they're saying stay down. He wants to get up. It looks like he might be okay. And I think he might have caught a stinger in his shoulder. Or... I mean, he hit him hard and knocked the ball right out. You know, Tubby, I'm I'm I was worried the first half, but even though they were up ten nothing, but now twenty four to three, I like how Edinburgh has played and I, I can see for the rest of the season I, I can see the light in front of me. It's I I'm not as worried as I was. Jake Sisson has been looking good. Walter Fletcher has been looking like top of the P sack running back. I mean mm-hmm. I'm excited for the rest of the year. I'm really, really I, excited and I'm excited for next week and I'm excited to end this game too. I I hope we can get a couple more points on the board while limiting the damage from Lake Erie. Lake Erie set with three receivers up top. Throws the long ball down to the right side of the field. Right, and I'm going to say that's number 13, uh, Canela Jones. Kind of got crossed up as they were running. Now they're talking back and forth, and yeah. it seems all sportsmanlike. I don't know. It's, I, I think it was a lot of... It seems sportsmanlike, but I think both sides were like, I think it was like I had you covered, and it was like, no, I was gone if it was on target. I think it was a lot of I would have caught that if it was near me, and I would have jumped over you. I think it's just, you know, it's competitiveness. It's competitiveness, but it wasn't like the chippiness that we saw earlier in the game. Now two receivers near side, two far side. Looks to throw again. This time over to the left. Nothing doing a little bit behind his receiver there. That's uh, Joshua Collins, the wide receiver, sophomore out of Strongsville, Ohio. <coughs> Lake Erie College now looks to get, I guess they're going to punt it away here. Mm-hmm. Fourth and long, I mean, you would think they would try to, I don't know, you're down by a few touchdowns, try to get back a little bit, but I think they're just going to play it safe. And It's a long line drive punt. Zero Hendrick catches it, tries to bring it up, brings it up to about the 35-yard line. Probably they're going to call Nope, they are going to put it on the 35. Okay, I'll take it. I, I, I The last punt, you wanted a fake. You wanted them to go for it. This punt, I, it, it, it's kind of like – I don't want to say – I won't say it, so I'll say I would think you would go for it. I know it's fourth and long, but you got to do something to try to get back into this game. And this Edinburgh offense, we saw in the last drive, they just kept on running it and running it and running it and trying to run the clock out. And so I'm assuming that's what they're going to do here. And you have a running back that you haven't been able to stop pretty much all game, 22 attempts, 179 yards. He's been looking very good in his sophomore season. Right, Jake in the offense now out on the field. He's got two receivers here near side, two far side with Walter Fletcher in out of his right hip in a shotgun, snaps the ball, looks left, looks right, throws right for Tanaz. Tanaz comes up with it, but I believe he's going to be out of bounds and they're going to call no catch. Almost got that foot in. Now you could say that was under throw, and I think that was purposely placed by Jake Sisson because it was kind of the, the corner not really – he was trying to catch up to Tanaz. And so 
Jake, I think, put in a place where Tanaz can just come back and come get it. And he did, but it was just a little bit too far outside. And so he caught it, but it went right out of bounds. The give is the Walter Fletcher. Walter Fletcher taking it straight up the middle here. Breaks it out to the 45-yard line for a first down Edinburgh. And he just seems to run harder after contact. Yeah. I mean, he's getting contact, and he's keeping his feet moving. He has good ball security. I mean, he, I believe he did let it slip that one time. But three receivers now near side, one far side. Fletcher in at Sisson's right hip. Shotgun. The give is the Fletcher. Fletcher takes it straight up the middle for a gain of about two. Now second go. Second down. Eight yards to go. Edinburgh with three receivers near side, one far side. Sisson with Fletcher on his left hip. Nope, looking. He's got to get rid of it. Pursued heavily, still rolling right, and throws it away. That's a smart decision with the ball right there. And good feet by Jake Sisson there. He's almost two defenders, almost got him, but able to put the wheels on at the last second. Get away, keep it looking a little bit, and when you reach the edge, get rid of it. Realize we don't want you to get hit, and we don't want to turn the ball over this late in the game, up 24-3 to with 5 minutes and 44 seconds to go. Edinburgh on their own 47-yard line, third and eight. Also, that was Gaelic in as running back on the play, and he's still in at Sisson's right hip. Three receivers here near side, one far side. Sisson in the shotgun, snaps the ball, fakes to get the Gaelic, throws as he's hit in double coverage. And holy cheese and crackers, Blake Riddick, you're going to give me a heart attack, homie, a heart attack there, homie. It, he almost came up with that in double coverage. Almost, and then Jake Sisson got hit hard, and he was also helped up and then a pat on the helmet from his attacker. So it was a little chippy earlier, but I think these, these two teams – Maybe it was just like opening game. Because, I mean, you got to remember this. opening game, yeah. This is Lake Erie College's opening game, too. So. And Lake Erie coming off a season where it was disappointing. And they put up a good effort. I think they have to be proud of what they, they came away with today and realize they have to limit the turnovers big time if they want to stay in games. And uh, Jake Sisson pooches this one down to about the 10-yard line, but it takes a Lake Erie College bounce and comes up to about the 13-yard line is where they'll start over. You're listening to live coverage of the Fighting Scots action on the Edinburgh Sports Network. Sponsored in part by John's Wildwood Pizzeria. Open daily at 105 Erie Street in Edinburgh. For eating, delivery, or takeout, John's menu includes pizza, hoagies, wings, salads, and more. Information is at 814-734-7355 or on the web at johnswildwoodpizza.com. 529 to go in the game. Lake Erie College puts in with more. Oh, and it's tipped again, again with the no-fly zone. This time it's number 27. That's DeAndre Dowdle uh, putting his hands on the ball, breaking up that play. And there's going to be a flag down. It's in the backfield. That's in holding territory. So it is against Lake Erie. They're going to back them up now. Yep. Back them up five more yards. So it'll be first down in like 15 to go. Exactly, Toby. <laughs> On their own six-yard line. And he's in safety town. Breaks out of safety town. He's He's on the run. Is more. Makes it out to about the... 16-yard line. We've been calling more the passing quarterback, but he has a set of wheels on him also, excluding that run. He has ran four. The stats are now all of a sudden stopping again. But we've been calling him the passing quarterback, but both of these quarterbacks have a set of wheels on him. Speaking of breaking free and wheels, that's Desmond Turner. Breaking free on that run, good enough for a first down out across the 30, call it the 
32, 33 yard line, 32 yard line. With four minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the game, Edinburgh Fighting Scots up 24 to three over the Lake Erie College Storm. Busted play here as Moore decides to run with it. Good for a gain of about three yards on that. Yeah, this has really been a running battle for, by both teams. Neither team's defense can really stop them. Walter Fletcher has been running wild, you know that. But also, you have three running backs. Four, well, you have three runners for Lake Erie, 92 yards, 47 yards, and 36 yards. They now send one man in motion, and the, and the give is to him. They toss it out to him on a little screen, but Edinburgh stays home, has the coverage on that one. Good gain for about... I want to say six yards, so I think they got about three to go. No, they didn't gain that much. Okay, they have four yards to go to make two receivers near side, two far side. Moore still in at quarterback. Rolling to his right, now running back, mixing up his field. Think he has enough for the first down? The refs are not going to give it to him. They're going to say he's... A couple inches short, and Moore is not happy Moore's about like, that. Can you can you bring the chains out here? Can you measure? No. Oh. I gotta say, I, I think it was an unfair spot. I I thought he had it. Honestly. I thought he had it by kind of a decent amount, but and now it's gonna be a penalty. So I guess it doesn't matter either. Yeah. So they started to do good, and then. I mean, this Lake Erie, like, if you're Lake Erie, breaking down their game right now, you have to be happy with how you played, but you're shooting yourself in the foot so much. This game would have been a lot closer. They get down to the red zone. They get penalties. They get sacked twice in a row. I mean, more, penalties and turnovers have just killed this team. Moore sets up now. Three minutes, 30 seconds left to go. Three receivers to the right. Looking right, trying to throw. Gets out, avoids some trouble here. As I believe that door comes up from behind. And drags, no, I'm sorry, that's Nick Pettigrew, the nose guard, comes up from behind. I don't know how they didn't get him in the backfield there. I believe that was Upperco that was streaking in there as well. They got in the backfield, couldn't get their hands on him. But if you're the quarterback, how are you going to let a nose guard run you down? You know, I think it was. How are you going to let a, never mind, I'll let it go. <laughs> but that's what I'd be saying. Like, if I was if I was his team, I'm like, how are you going to let the big man run you down? I could agree with it, Tubby. All right, so now Lake Erie on here to punt. Straight line drive punt again. Zero Hendrick decides to field it, cuts through. Makes a gain, I want to say, about five yards from where he caught it. So now 241 left to go here in the ball game. Edinburgh leads it 24-3 to over Lake Erie College. You're listening to live coverage of the Fighting Scots action on Edinburgh Sports Network, sponsored in part by the Edinburgh Hotel Bar, serving a variety of lunch and dinner items every day from their location at 100 Meadville Street in downtown Edinburgh. Information is at 814-734-5103 or online at edinburghhotelbar.com. Jake Sisson now out there with the offense. Three receivers here near side to give us a Fletcher to go around the outside, but he stops, tries to reverse the field, tries to get through the middle, nothing doing. Stop for, I want to say, a loss of about a yard, Gabe. There's only so much he can do. He broke a couple of tackles there, wasn't able to get out of that last little bit, and it's two minutes and 22 seconds to go in this game. Edinburgh leads 24-3. to three. They now bring in Rob Bell at running back. Two receivers here near side, one far side. And off sides there by Lake Erie, free play. They try to throw it, and it's caught. Not no. caught, but it was bad pass interference on Lake Erie there. And it was late for the offside also. I, I think they called it. I didn't see a flag go up until after the ball was thrown, but I thought he caught that ball also. And they could have get, got a defensive pass interference, but they did not. But they'll move the ball up anywhere on the offside from Lake Erie, I think. Yep, could have been a freebie. That's good quarterbacking from Jake Sisson. That's what we need. Smart play to continue it out and try to get something for nothing. So 
So two minutes and four seconds here left to go in the game. Edinburgh up 24-3 to over Lake Erie College. The Lake Erie fans did not like that call. The refs in the crowd. But it looked like it was offsides. Moving them up only five yards. I mean, it might be my old eyes, but I didn't see any of the Edinburgh players move to try to draw them. You know what I mean? Stay tuned after the game, and we will break down this Edinburgh football game. We'll talk about what we liked, what we didn't like. And we'll also break down Lake Erie, who I think, I mean, they need to, they can be excited for this rest of the year. I don't think it's going to be an own 11 season for them like it was last mm-hmm. year. They no, this a is lot all improved. No, this is all, uh, um, for both teams, this is all fixable either side. Mm-hmm. The give is to Rob Bell, but Rob was met like almost as he got the ball in his hands by the Lake Erie College defenders. Two minutes to go. And it's going to be a timeout by Lake Erie. We'll go ahead and step away here also on a timeout. We'll, we'll take 45 seconds here on the Edinburgh Fighting Scots Sports Network. Someone who's being bullied online? Send the witness emoji. It looks like an eye in a speech bubble and it's in the symbol section near the clocks in your phone. You'll let the world know it isn't cool and you'll let your friend know you care. Learn more about the witness emoji at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. And we're back here at Sox Harrison Stadium, Edinburgh with the ball. 156 left to go in this contest between Edinburgh and Lake Erie College, the storm. But Jake tried to fire one off here to uh, Corin Williams, but it was incomplete. Jake now two receivers near side, one far side. Going to pooch kick this one again. Another decent kick. Down about the 20, takes a hop. Lake Erie College going to field, try to run this one back. And he's stopped right there about the 24-yard line. Something's going on on the sidelines between the two players on each side. But it gets broken up pretty quickly. Yep, everybody realizes that it's just a game and they go back to business because there's only 146 left to go here in the entire game. Edinburgh up 24-3. to So Lake Erie College now back out on the field with a chance to try to drive here, pull out some last-minute heroics. That is Smith in at quarterback. We turn on his right. They bring one man in motion. They fake the give. Looks to throw. Tries to cut it back. Now he's going to run it up on his own. Has a first down and more. As he gets out of bounds about the 44-yard line. Good gain on a busted play. I mean, that that backfield, they have... Four very athletic backs. If they can just string together some good play calling and not, not take the penalties they have been having and don't turn the ball over, this is a dangerous team. Looking to throw now across the right side of the field. Intercepted by, guess who? Zero Hendrick. And he's running it back. He knows what to do. He's at the 20, at the 10, 5, and he's in there. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you go to pick Sixville. <laughs> it is his third interception of the day. This one finally coming all the way back. There was one, I think, got all the way down to the five-yard line and uh, put the exclamation point on this game with a minute and 20 seconds to go. Edinburgh makes it 30-3. to three. Is that what um, 
our our former partner would call a thirty burger. I don't think he said thirty burger. I or think it's only forty burger. Forty burger, and then mm. yeah. I don't know, 30 ounces of meat, that's still a good-sized burger in my book. You know, yeah, I like it. That's, a, that's still a good, solid burger. But All the right, sixth turn, third turnover on the day for Lake Erie, whew, that's a lot. Cushman now on to put the explanation point for the extra point. 120 left to go here in the contest. I don't know what they need to be discussing, but they're still discussing. Okay, now everybody's set. Here's snap, kick is up and blocked. Lake Erie College has a chance to return this one. Jake Sisson pushing, I believe it's number 23 here. That'll be Marcellus Mitchell, defensive back, 5'9", out of West Bloomfield, Michigan. Who picked up the block? I thought okay. Jake Sisson was going to try to tackle him there. I was like, Jake, yeah, maybe just stand in the way. Don't don't lower lower your shoulder. He's yeah. played a after the rough start. He's played a very good and very decent second half, and especially a very good fourth quarter. The fourth quarter for him has been pretty lights out. Not very many incompletions. I think it's I think it's mostly. They get a little bit of a cushion, and he stops forcing things, and he realizes, okay, if I don't have it, I throw it away, or I, I dink it off a little bit, and if I do have it down the field, then I throw it. We saw that beautiful pass at third and long um, in the, I believe it was the start of the fourth quarter, that was, I, I want to say a 40-yard gain around there, maybe a 30-yard gain from Jake Sisson. That was a very good pass from him, something that we would not have seen in the first half. Coach Bradford taking the Gatorade bath. First, for, I mean, a lot of teams would be like, why is he taking a Gatorade bath? I, I, I didn't see that. And it's just it's just the first game. It's, he's been here since 1999, finally getting the head coaching position. One of the pillars of this organization for the past 18 years. Finally gets the reins as head coach. And what does he do? Comes out and delivers an opening day home opener win here against uh, Lake Erie College. I mean, I can say that now. I mean, with 120, they're not going to... And this is a team just two years ago that went 0-11, so wins still excite them. They might celebrate every win like that. Oh, and Lake Erie College kind of muffs the return here, but they're going to let they're going to call it a touchback. Mm-hmm. I think it's because of the ball. Yeah, touchdown and so. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So 118 left to go here in the game. Edinburgh Fighting Scots with 30. Lake Erie College with 3. Lake Erie College will have the ball though at the 25. It's cuz I seen a marker. Why do I see a marker down? It's the 20. I mean it was a touchback, yeah. Okay. But no, like the so it goes on to 20. I don't, they're discussing the umpire and the ref. They're discussing something over there. I don't because see there is a yellow flag right there by the field judge. Hmm. Good so, eye, Tommy. I didn't see that. Now we're going to get an explanation as the umpire comes over. Well, I'm sorry, the referee comes over to explain. It's still baseball season. Yeah. And the Indians are doing well, so. And the, and my tribe's doing well. The Pirates, though. Not so much. Mm. All right, we'll see what happens. And also, if you want to hear what we think about this game after digesting for a few days, we will not be on the air on Monday because... Labor Day. Labor Day. But join us right here as we break down everything on the morning after sports show every morning on uh, Fighting Scots Radio, WFSE 88.9, 9 to 10, every weekday morning we'll be talking about Edinburgh sports, we'll be talking about national sports, and we'll definitely be, be breaking down this game right here. And we'll be doing it in a minute and 20 seconds also after this game ends. Right. We'll also bring you the recap from the volleyball tournament as our ladies' volleyball team was in action. They're up two wins. 
As of last night, they were up two wins. And I know they played this morning. I will check right now and see how they did this morning. And then they're playing at 3 o'clock, so right now. Yeah, so they're getting fact tip-off for that. So if you want to file out of here at, at, at Sox Harrison Stadium and just file right over to Macomb, you can cheer on the ladies' volleyball team as they are concluding their tournament play. I wonder what is happening. I are they re kicking? I think they're re kicking. They're re kicking, but now he's gonna re kick from the fifty. Yeah. So it was a penalty on Lake Erie. Like I understand being just, but really I mean at this point it's a thirty to three game. One twenty to go left on the clock. Yeah, you didn't need to break it down for the last five minutes. Yeah, could you not just like give them the ball at the twenty five and let's play this out? I mean, there's got to be some type of mercy going on here. But now we get to see the Edinburgh sideline jump up and now down Now the Edinburgh so. sideline gets back into it again. The Jaws theme coming out from the Fighting Scots marching band. And the kick is up and deep in and out of the end zone. And that one is a legit touchback. Oh, late hit and flags everywhere. That was like an instant party. Everything popped off there. All kinds of flags. Four flags coming flying in. I was trying to find that volleyball score, but I could not find it. But It was like they just collided for no apparent reason other than, hey, you got pads, I got pads, let's hit each other. Like, I, so I, you think it's going to go on both sides? I don't know. I know it's dumb with a hunt with like a minute twenty left to go in the game. I can yeah, tell you that it's, it's been a minute twenty for the last. It feels for the like last ten minutes. Twenty minutes. It's been a minute and twenty left to go. Offsetting, yeah. And I think both sidelines aren't well, both fans aren't happy. They think it should be on the other guys, but they offset them, and I think they're getting kicked out also. They said something about the remaining of the game. Well, no, if they do that, then then they'll miss part of the next game as well, I believe. I don't see anybody I know Coach, leaving. I know field. Coach Bradford's over there trying to defend his players. I don't see anybody leaving. Coach Bradford is mad, though. And Lake Erie is not too happy either. Tell me the other one that saw it, what happened. I Break it down. I mean, I barely caught, like, the very end of it, and it just appeared that, like, they kind of just slammed into each other for no other apparent reason than that they could. Well, hopefully just it, it just goes to a personal foul and it ends at that. I, I heard something about the remainder of the game. It's it's hard to hear from up here, especially with headphones on. But I hear some screaming from the Edinburgh fans. The refs in the the refs in the stands. Well, you know, opinions are like noses. Everybody's got one. <laughs> So, of course, some just decide to be more vocal. Of course, you haven't heard me at my own children's game, so. <laughs> I have a feeling I can I can imagine what you're like. Oh, it's 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 unreal. Like, my my wife has to constantly remind me that, hey, they're 9 and 10 years old. There are no college recruiters here. You need there to might shut be. Up. You never know. Yeah. All right, now we got everything settled. Now Lake Erie College is on offense. Moore's the quarterback. Two receivers near side. Two receivers far side. Hike the ball. Hand it off, run it right up the middle for a first down. Finally tripped up out at the 40-yard line, 39-yard line. And the clock begins at, nope, clock stopped because first down. A minute and ten seconds to go, though. Nope, now it's rolling. Now the clock's running. Two receivers near side, two far side. Moore still in at a quarterback. Hand off 
again to Turner? No, Harris. Antoine Harris. I'm sorry. Forty six seconds left to go. Your score is still thirty to three. Edinburgh over Lake Erie College. There's the give to the man in motion. Still trying to find his way around the line here as number 11 breaks through with the stop. That's Lindell Service, and there's the strong safety. A flag on the play. It didn't look late to me, but that might be what they're calling it. Maybe like we can't see very well over here. It might have been he was going out of bounds and then dragged out a little bit. But, I mean, it's 30 seconds left in the game. Well, what's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong, and if they do wrong, well, then they got to get caught, apparently. You always know what to say, Tubby. I try. Tubby is good, Tubby is wise. That just means I made a whole bunch of more mistakes. The corner on the offense, I didn't see anything. I mean, it was far, it was far away from us, but again, it's a personal foul with 30 seconds to go in a 30-3 to game. I don't know if it's going to do much. Is the last minute I, of this game. Has I don't know. Rag. I hope they throw it, and I hope that we get another pick six, because those are exciting. I wouldn't uh, mind that. You know, I wouldn't mind that either. Would not mind that. That'd be kind of cool. More runs and pitches it. Ooh. Ooh. Hard hit. Youch. I like that option, though, but wow, what a hit. Who I was mean, that? We Bye. heard it. That was across the field. We heard That's number 90, I believe. Xavier Fisher coming across, laying the lumber. And the crowd is counting down. Three, two, one. And they get a playoff. See if they bomb it to the end zone. Nope, nope. They're bombing about 20 yards. And almost oh, picked off again. That would be uh, DeAndre Dowd again trying to get a pick here. As this game finally concludes... 30-3, to three, Edinburgh Fighting Scots, your victors today over to Lake Erie College Storm. At least they don't have a long trip home to think about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's hop on the bus and they're almost home. So it won't be too far. But That's an excellent – so the Wayne Bradford area gets off to an excellent start with a home opener win here for the Fighting Scots. Gabe, what do you think going forward they need to do here? Well, with Edinburgh, there, there's there's things that I loved and there's things that I hated. I did not like that first half one bit for Edinburgh. The only positive that I can take out of it was Walter Fletcher being Walter Fletcher of last year, the first game of last year especially, and then also that no-fly zone defense. Not letting up anything. I think they threw four long passes and two of them got picked off. So that's a 50% success rate for Edinburgh. But going into the the, the halftime, up 10 nothing. They still that's the that's a good thing about it though. They were playing their worst game, but they were still up going into half. That means when other areas of the game are staying down, others are elevating and keeping them in the game and keeping them in control. But they also have to think. We got kind of lucky at the same time. Six turnovers from Lake Erie, four of which were in the first half. <sighs> Going into the second half, though, a lot changed, especially in that fourth quarter where Edinburgh, we've talked about, they're a good team at just all of a sudden picking up points, picking up points, picking up points. And now it's 30-3 to when a lot of the game was 10-3 to in the second half. But um, Jake Sisson looks good in the second half. Walter Fletcher continued on, a, on an amazing game and put up top, maybe top of the PSAC stats. He finished with 189 yards on 25 attempts. That defense, especially Hendricks, I mean, three interceptions, one for a pick six, six one return to the five-yard line. You have to be happy with that day, and you have to be happy with the defense in general. Only giving up three points, I'd say it's a good day to be a fighting Scott. How about you, Tubby? Yeah, it's an excellent day, you know, and – you know, now they got the uh, the rust knocked off, got some live action hitting in. You know, it's going to be good, especially with, uh, I believe, Lockhaven comes in here next weekend. We have Lockhaven, I believe. 
I, I believe so. I will look at it, look it up um, right now. So that'll be uh, some PSAC competition there. Um, you know, a lot of things to, a lot of things you can improve on, but a lot of good takeaways from this game as well. So um, we can confirm that is Lockhaven is coming in. Okay, good. So we'll have them coming in, and that's a good little ride. Um, that was a fun, ex- exciting game last year as we went there and faced them. So don't miss anything. We'll be on the air next weekend bringing you the same action, same website, same everything. So if you want to catch us again, make sure you tune in right here to 88.9 WFSE or through Edinburgh Now or on the YouTube page to catch all of your action. We'll have further breakdown on this game live Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. on the morning after. So from everybody here to everybody out back in the studio, Britton, Brandon, Bradley, camera operators, Maddie, Michaela. I don't believe I'm leaving anybody out, am I? We had Pat down there for the highlight cam, and I think that pretty much does it. Mike working the social media for us tonight. Um, Everybody on the staff on Campus Media helping us out. Big thank you. We can't do it without you. Thank you again to our sponsors because we can't be on air without the sponsors. So join us next week right here on the Edinburgh Fighting Scots Network. Have yourselves a great day, Borough.